waiting for the bus. Oh, yeah. Nothing you keep trying to say yeah. shit about my fucking kick. And you annoying me and aggravating me. On your wrist, a plain giant. Standing at the bus stop, sucking on a lollipop. Once she gets pumping, it's hard to make the hottie stop. Hottie stop, stop, stop. You ready? All right, now. <laughs> this could be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. I'm Jane, the plainest Jane, and I provide serve in the form of black news and celebrity entertainment. And baby, we have some things that we need to, we, we need to talk about some stuff this evening. So come on in, hit thumbs up. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. I know I've been gone for a minute. Now I'm back in the jump off though. <laughs> I'm back. I'm, I'm ready to jump off about all these topics. There's so much I've been trying to do. It took me two days to do my little nails. And then I had to get my hair done yesterday. I wanted to go live yesterday. But real life is happening. I'm working my nine to five. I'm going to therapy. And I'm committing to once a week for therapy. So sometimes that gets in the way. Or that's something that needs to be prioritized over YouTube. Come on in. Get a seat on the bus. Get a seat on the bus. Nine to five therapy hair, nails, you know, as a woman, I don't know how men feel, but as a woman, you, you feel a little bit better when you look good. And I had let my nails go for a couple of weeks because really they needed to breathe. My follicles needed to breathe before I put any gel polish back on them. So I let my nails breathe, but I needed to get my hair done. And I, I, I just needed some time to kind of get, get right again. Had a huge wave after all of the funky Dineva commentary um, so, you know, I, I had to focus on me, even though I was, sometimes I can prioritize YouTube a bit too much to the point where my real life suffers. So sometimes when you see that I'm not consistent, understand that I'm still balanced in my real life and, and my family and my nine to five, I don't do this full time. While I appreciate y'all's support, um, I don't do this full time. So I'm trying to get better at giving y'all stuff. You know, if you're behind the scenes, you get a bit more. Um, but you know, real life comes first and you can't pour from an empty cup. And sometimes I go live at one or two in the morning and I'll be live up late. And then I have to call out of work the next day. Cause I don't be giving YouTube too much. And I haven't been prioritizing my real life. So me and that balance and what I'm willing to sacrifice for YouTube, it's a constant power struggle between, well, you need to do this right now. If you don't do it now, then, and, but your real life though. Sometimes the call outs are worth it. Sometimes the call outs are actually worth it. But other times it's just like, um, so anyway, real life is happening. I wanted to tap in with y'all. What did y'all have to eat? Jane's Weeping Bushes in the building. Shout out to Jane's Weeping Bush. We got my Weeping Bush in the building. Listen, we got some stuff to discuss. I want to get straight into it. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for. What I'm going to do is I would love for somebody to call in, even if it's a couple of you um, that call in. Because y'all know I can pour from an empty cup sometimes. I be burning the candle on both ends and then get depressed for three days because I realized my real life should have came before YouTube. Um, so sometimes it's, I know I've, I've even seen the criticism. She's not consistent. She's not, she's still balancing a real job. The people that you see that are consistent, they have the time to go live different times a day, all the time. But I don't, I still have to work my job and take care of my, my, my family and spend time with my family and bond with my family. And sometimes when I get in my YouTube mind state, I'm like, forget everybody and everything. Cause I need to focus on this. And that drives a wedge between me and different variables in my real life. Seriously. Um, sometimes I I put YouTube too high on the this is what you need to do type of situation. But anyway, my, my, my supporters, especially the Discord and people who are members, y'all know how I'll be live at, at, at 7.50 and I'll be like, well, I have to leave for work in about 20 minutes. Let me get off of here. That's like, girl, you've been live for three hours this morning and now you got to go to work? Like, that's not going to work. 
<laughs> but um, so what I've done is I've already dropped the link because I want to see how y'all feel. Y'all know what is actually y'all know the, the the big topic today. And the big topic today and over the last couple of days is this girl with the brick. Let's go ahead and read the room. It's not going to change how I feel uh, about this situation. Although before, thank you to Samantha edit yet. Lucius, I got to put me first. I got to put me first. I got to put me first, Lucius. Got to put me first sometimes. Because <laughs> um, there have been some times where I've been so sleep deprived that I've come on here and I'm a bit, I'm not on my A game. And it's kind of apparent. So I got to be on my A game in my real life and feel confident about that and then be on my A game on YouTube and be confident about that. But if I'm loony because I'm sleep deprived or I've been on a... Uh -uh. Got I got to put me first, Lucius. <laughs> um. So what I want is for somebody to call in about the brick to face thing. We have to talk about this brick to face situation. It's a trending topic. I wanted to wait until I spoke on it. I felt like I needed more information, even though we had a lot of information. But was the information pertinent to what transpired with old girl, right? How can I even pose this question to have y'all vote in the comments? Let's just keep it simple. Do you believe Brick Face Girl or do you believe Brick Face Girl was lying? So let's do that. Do you believe Brick Face Girl 100%, right? Do you believe it? We got some shocking things to go over today. Do you believe Brick Face Girl? Put a one in the chat if you believe her through and through and that you should believe all victims. Put a one in the chat if you believe her and... Or put a two in the chat if you feel like, eh, there's something sketchy about her. Put a one in the chat if you believe her through and through. Put a two in the chat if you think there's something sketchy. There's something sketchy about her past videos. And don't get me wrong, I'm fully aware. Y'all know I always do a pulse check. I'm fully aware that there are several people who feel like her past videos, her past demeanor online is very cringy. I'm totally aware of that. But I want you to vote before I get started. Like I said, it's not going to change a damn thing about what I have to say. But I just, I, I just want to kind of gauge how you all feel. If you, you believe, put a one in the chat if you believe her through and through. And you should believe all victims. And put a two in the chat if you think that there is something sketchy about her and you may have some doubts to her story. A one if you believe her, a two if you have some doubts. And shout out to all of my moderators who are in the chat right now and all of my channel members, okay? Um, so I see mainly twos. I do see one one here. Everything else, I always see. <laughs> yeah, she is a biological woman. A lot of people have been misgendering her out of rage or frustration, but she is a woman. Um. So to, she didn't file a police report. Absolutely correct. She did not file a police report nor did she ride in the ambulance. Shout out to Tanya TKO. <laughs> two, two, and two, this too much, okay? Okay, I'll go find me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, she does have a couple of different go find me. She got hit, that's for sure, but the story is a scam. Did she hit herself or was she really bricked by someone? Good question. Thank you so much. <laughs> Y'all know Oprah Winfrey be coming to my chat when Gail and Stepman not looking. So Oprah Winfrey sent two dollars and said Stepman gave Gail a brick, <laughs> a brick face for what? So what? Uh, you know what, Oprah, 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 Gr it was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. 
I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Oprah, girl, you know you out of pocket. Oprah, you out of pocket. You need to go repent. Repent! Repent! I'm mocking Whoopi Goldberg's character and for color girls. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into the brick face girl, right? I do want somebody to call in. I want to hear what anybody thinks, regardless of what side you're on about it. I would really prefer to have somebody call in and give their opinion first about it. Um, before I go mine, anybody, right? Um, so again, I'm, I'm gonna drop the link for y'all to call in what I'm going to do while I'm dropping this mods. If you want to, you know what mods, if you are in the moderator chat and the discord, there's the link. I put it so you can copy and paste it as I'm getting into this first story, which is only going to take me all the three minutes. Carry on. Franklin has been arrested again. This is really sad and traumatic. And thank y'all for hitting the thumbs up button. 150 of us here. We've got 69 thumbs up. Oh, we already got somebody in the back. Okay, cool. So let me go ahead and rush through um, this Carry On Franklin situation so that we can get into y'all's thoughts and opinions and where I land with the Brick Lady video. Um, I have a feeling I already know what a lady, uh, what, what our first caller thinks uh, backstage. However... Let's go ahead and to get into this. Y'all know Carrie on Franklin is the son of Kirk Franklin. And he was arrested not to, well, he was arrested, what was it, sometime last year. I reported on that as well. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm not a stranger to reporting on it. I find it really sad what, 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 what Carrie on is, is, is going through and what he claims in the entire family dynamic. Um, it seems that both, it seems that there's wrongdoing and negligence on both sides, the family side and carry on side, but it seems nobody's hearing each other, right? There's always this. Let's get into this because the media outlets are not reporting this, but this is something that people do not know. So let's take a look because he's a Texas native. And so we can see here, carry on Franklin. And um, again, I, I put the mugshot on the thumbnail. I don't see anybody reporting on this, like no one at all very strange to me. So when you click on this, you can see the book and date. And look, there's one thing that threw me for a loop, not the book and date. Like, where is the G? Like, are they intentionally trying to, trying to put slang on the website? The book and date. Like, what about the booking date? But anyway, that's something that was uh, consistent all throughout the entire website, right? And you can see he was booked on September the 6th which was just two days ago. We click on it. We get to his mugshot, okay, and see what he is booked on. And if a lot of us remember the entire uh, Carry On Franklin debacle from a few years ago, what he accused his father of, the recordings that he released, and so on and so forth. Um, this time, he was arrested the other day on September the 6th for insufficient bond. Y'all know he was out on bond for the things that he was in there for uh, prior to. So I'm not sure what exactly led them to carry on, what tipped them off. Was there another crime or an incident that happened that led to this? Or did they just go out looking for him, trying to make an example out of him because he is a, a, a nationwide known celebrity son? There's no clue. However, he was booked at 3.34 p.m. And I'm this I'm assuming it's Texas time, right? On September the 6th. And for some people, it's September the 9th. For some people, it's late at night, September the 8th. So this was just two days ago, essentially, when we round it off. Um, now, it says insufficient bond. His bond was apparently 20000 But you know, you only have to give or obligated to give 10% of your bond when you are booked. So whoever bailed him out the last time, if they had money, if they had access to money, I know Larry Reed was one of those platforms that he went to around about that time. Um, and, and he was saying that he was going to put anything on his books he's cut. And I'm like, between Larry Reed and Kirk Franklin, you mean to tell me they couldn't put $2,000 together? 
Like, this is crazy that he owes the courts less than $2,500 and, you know, he's still there. While I do feel like Carry On has some learning to do um, and with life in general, uh, this is a really unfortunate situation. And it, it does and it is and it will affect Kirk Franklin in one way, shape or form. It absolutely will. But I did want to talk about this because it is public knowledge. OK, there's just about nobody talking about this. And this it, this was a, a really unfortunate situation. Um, carry on, Franklin. I feel like he does need help. If any of you now look, I watched the first season of Bad Boys L.A. I did. I had my little Zeus Network subscription. I canceled it after the after that because whatever. And he seemed very personable, but meek. And I felt like some of the characters, some of the aggressive characters were, um, or talent, should I say, personalities were taking advantage of Carry On. And I also felt like it's obvious that he has some sort of emotional trauma that needs to be addressed. That can't be an eternal excuse for whatever it is that you go out here and you do in society. But I do feel like Carry On needs help. Sometimes I wonder if the attention and the quote unquote clout from social media, if it helps, hinders or enables him. I wonder that sometimes. Um, however, I, 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 I did sense that he needs some help. Whether he's being completely honest about he and his father's relationship, I, from my standpoint of what they have made public, I feel like Carry On has done some wrong things to his 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 people's his family that he feels like are at fault for his traumas, and I feel like his family has some wrongdoing for their fault and their trauma with him as well. I feel like fault lies on both sides. How do you quantify that when you don't know everything? It's it's literally impossible, but you can see the fault on both sides. At least I I can from how I judged it. And again, this is stuff that they made public, so it's not like I pried into anything. I'm only judging what has been readily made available to the public. And I feel that there is fault on both sides and, and additional layers of understanding from both sides that could be given to the, the you know, the opposite. Um, however, Carry On Franklin is arrested again. How long will he sit? Is anybody gonna put anything on his books? Why isn't this news like his first arrest? Like his first arrest was a big deal. like. But this arrest, it's like nobody's talking about it. I thought I was going to be late to the scene talking about it. But I'm like, I ain't even seen no videos of anybody talking about Carry On being arrested again. Kirk Franklin's son being arrested again. I haven't seen any videos about it. And not that I want to spread it around like it's whatever. It's it. One thing that I do enjoy speaking on is the Black family dynamic and pointing out issues and possible solutions within that. And Carry On Franklin is a really good example of the Black family dynamic. And, you know, well, he's got a father who was a gospel persona, who was the leader of some churches or the religious folk. People naturally are going to take the Kirk Franklin side more than they take his because Kirk Franklin is a quote unquote trusted figure. Um, I do find that there's something problematic within a dynamic like that because Carry On Franklin would never have as big of a megaphone as Kirk Frank and influence as Kirk Franklin does. So these are things that I've that I speak about and things that I have reported on. Um, but it's really ironic that nobody's talking about this. It seemed like at first everybody was concerned about Carry On when he was arrested the first time because of his personality type and. And how they seen him show up on Bad Boys LA. That, oh, he can't handle it. We need to be concerned. The Larry Reed interview. Oh, we concerned. I'm going to put money in your books. We're going to get you out. Where's the outrage? Where's the concern? Where, where's any of that right now? Does Larry Reed care this time? I mean, Larry, Larry Reed had the exclusive interview talking to him on the jail call from the last time. Where's the outrage now? Because I, I don't feel like Carry On has a personality to survive in jail long term i don't um i do think he needs to be held accountable for whatever he is doing that may not be legal um and it's just not in his best interest but do i feel like he can survive in jail absolutely not 
But again, where is the outrage now? Why we just had the outrage the first time and now nobody gives a hell now? I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's it's that that that's a little that's a little strange to me. That's a little strange to me. But um this is where we are. And I wanted to go ahead and share um share this with you. And another thing that I find weird as I could wrap up this topic and get on to our caller and get on to the brick face girl, it's ironic, right? And, I, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out how Zeus deciphers these things, okay? Y'all remember not too long ago, Orlando Brown was arrested. And y'all know Orlando Brown. He been on his <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, for a while. Zeus went and bailed him out and even made a scene out of it. Natalie Nunn went to go get him. It looked like Natalie Nunn got him out, but we know what Natalie money. It was Zeus money, whatever. They bailed the craziest, I mean, subjectively, <laughs> the craziest man out of Bad Boys LA because Carry On is a part of Bad Boys LA. They bailed, Zeus Network bailed Orlando Brown out. How come they not bailing Carry On out? How come? What makes Orlando what what makes Carry On worthy of sitting in jail, but Orlando has the privilege of being bailed out by the network he works for? They both work on the same show. A whole bunch of crazy niggas on that show. Orlando Brown, uh, Carry On Franklin has some issues that he needs to work through. All of them got Raz B. We're going to get into him in a second. I, I, how do they decide oh, we're going to bail this one out, but we're not going to bail that one out? You know, and especially because his bomb was only $20,000, he only needed two stacks. What is two stacks to a network? So I don't know. Am I making excuses for him? Absolutely not. But I do remember they bailed out an unhinged Orlando Brown and they let him carry on sit. So, so I, I, I just wonder what, what's, what's the criteria for them? I do wonder. And thank y'all for hitting thumbs up on the video. If you haven't already hit thumbs up on the video, look, it's free. You can send a cash app to support the show to dollar sign T-H-A, plainest Jane. Make sure you proofread it, T-H-A, plainest Jane. You can support by joining a membership. We do members only lives behind the scenes. Um, you get members only posts, early access to topics, the ability to give topics to the show that you want to see and so much more when you become a member. So you can support the stream by sending a cash app, sending a super chat, joining a membership, or you could just hit thumbs up on the video and I appreciate them all the same. Now, real quick, speaking of Raz B, tell me he not having a Britney Spears moment without telling me he not having a Britney Spears moment. What is this? It was on his Instagram this morning. He's since deleted it. Thank goodness I downloaded it. What has Raz B got going on? He got the tidy whitey. I'm trying to figure out what's worse. He got the tidy whiteys in black. Okay, so he got tidy blackies on. He got the viral red boots on in gold. He got on his little Minnie Mouse shoes. Wow. <laughs> was worse the audacity the gall the maga hat the make america great again hat the tidy whities in black the shoes the taco meat the michael jackson glove let's not forget that i, I, I just I, I i just and so of course he had copyrighted music playing so i had to mute it but i mean what apparently he got a new song coming out called thong thong something it's, it's giving Britney Spears. Wow. It's, it's 
it's given very much Britney Spears. I I I I I don't, I don't I'm starting to agree with one of my behind the scenes homegirls who says something is wrong with this. never mind. I won't even say it. I won't say it. Um <laughs> Something's wrong. Let's talk about the brick. Let's go ahead and refresh. We got a caller back here. We're going to get into our caller. Does anybody else want to call in and talk about the brick? If you do, let's go ahead and refresh for just a second. Okay. And now we're going to talk about the, the highly anticipated subject matter that is the brick. I want to see where y'all land on it. And then I'm going to tell you where I land on this Brit girl situation because I have been conflicted over the past couple of days, but I finally reached a conclusion. And today was the day where I'm like, you know what? I can speak about it without being on the fence about it. Something felt off about the girl. Something felt off, but I didn't want to go live and say something feels off about her. And therefore because like, is that right? Right. Cause that's me judging. But today is the day. Hit thumbs up, buckle up your seat belts, share this video out with somebody via text message, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, however it is you share videos, your group chat, share this thing with somebody, support the stream. That's another way you can support the stream without spending any money. Share the video with somebody via text message. We're about to get into some stuff. <laughs> that baby. It's the update of your life okay drop some pancakes hit thumbs up and let's go it's time to face it boo your product needs more exposure if you want to see your ad here on my channel be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat but if you're new in my neighborhood here on youtube hey i'm the plainest jane and i provide coverage and commentary on trending stories viral events and black culture i definitely definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup It was a YouTuber, and shout out to her for this good detective work, honey. Uh, she's the one who went and was able to put two and two together. The plainest Jane. That's that's the person's name, the plainest Jane. I couldn't think of what their name was on the podcast, but I wanted to go ahead and shout them out. They're the ones who did the work. All right. So, like I said, shout out to plainest Jane. She's the one who put that together. So Shekinah was not lying. So when Tiny came back on some, oh, she's making it up. Mm, sounded like Tiny's voice to me. All right, and we are back. Let's get into our first caller, a lady 747. Thank you for calling in. You're live on the air. What are your thoughts about the uh, the brick lady? Brick face, brick face girl, brick face lady. Um, first, I have to say, Jane, you look lovely this evening. Loving the hair. Oh, my goodness. Let me see the top of your head. I love the designs. Thank awesome. you. Okay. So you said you have a feeling you know what my thoughts are. So do you want to tell me what you think? I know. Nope. I want to hear what you think. <laughs> the only reason I say I have a feeling I know what your thoughts are is because we ran across one another in a chat earlier today. And okay. so because you were listening to that broadcast, I'm like, oh, that may or may not have influenced you or a bit, the information that you've been privy to based on the live that we saw each other in. I'm like, OK, that might have given her some knowledge on maybe her decision making. But yeah, right. What are your thoughts? right. Right. So I was working today and I heard probably three different um, lives today or at least videos today about it. But can I just, just quickly say about Kirk Franklin's son, he looks really bad and I my heart goes out for him, but I see more of this happening more and more and more. And these guys, if they get exposed just once to those drugs that are out there right now, they're done. Yeah. 
And um, that very likely could be his situation. And then when you were mentioning why isn't he getting the help that maybe others are getting, he might be so far gone. They may have contacted his family and said, hey, you need to handle this because they know his family has the resources for it. And if they said no, then that might be where why he That's is where crazy. he is. crazy. Like $2,000? I know it costs around about that much to get Orlando out. So I feel like Orlando is a bit more far gone. I feel like Orlando is legitimately more far gone than carry on. You know what I mean? So for me, mm -hmm. it comes off a little predatory on Zeus Network's behalf because it's like you went and got the looniest tune out of the bin to get ratings because you know when you bring him back he's so unpredictable and unhinged you're going to get the ratings because people like to see a train wreck whereas mm -hmm. though a, a, a carry on necessarily he's not always on one every mm -hmm. now and then he might do a little something something but orlando is always on one so it's like you leave the mellow one sitting and you go get the crazier one out because he can get you ratings that, that's how i see it that and I yeah. feel like that's foul. Yeah. Um, Orlando probably has somewhere to land. I don't know that Carry On has a, a, any place to go. So mm -hmm. I don't know. So, okay. So to the whole situation with the break. So I'm, I've am i been going back and forth in my mind about this. Um, <clears throat> this kind of relates to the first thing. I do think there's a mental health issue going on here. Um, but you know what? Everybody who is suffering from mental health issues, um, how can I put this? Some are predators and um, some need um, help and can't help themselves. I see her as more of a predator with mental health issues. And, and I'm not a professional at all. This is just my, I'm just, you know, I'm just watching this stuff and, and that's what I see. I think <clears throat> she has issues, but some people become narcs and I see her leaning toward that um, way that she is using people in situations and she is relying on, on people in these situations to get over. Now, something I heard that kind of, it's, it's just been rattling around in my brain a little bit that the club owner saw her that night with a mask over her face. It is very possible, excuse me, excuse me. She showed up that night after being in a fight already, partied, because they said she was in the club prior with that mask on her face. We don't know that to be true, but I did see the video with her in the club with that mask on her face. I feel like... I feel like either she showed up and she was already injured or she yeah. thought because she had that mask on, she got a little extra feisty. Was she, if you've seen her, mm. if you've seen her prior incidents and run-ins with social media, she's very, very mouthy. And it doesn't matter if you're a man, woman, dog, or, or, or a gerbil. She is going to mouth off on you. I feel like she had that mask on and she felt like, what what you gonna do hmm. but you know what before i get to getting into how i feel I, let me <laughs> that because who else is gonna be is you know how hot it's been lately with a mask yeah. on right. you you up to know that the people in philly are i follow the scorpion show with kevin and mikhail and they're like you know it's the middle of the summer and you see a uh a, a, a somebody walk into the store with a ski mask on, you getting the hell out that store as soon as possible. Because anybody mm -hmm. in the summertime coming up into a store or an establishment with a ski mask on when it's 90 degrees outside is looking mm -hmm. for trouble. They about to do mm -hmm. something and they're trying to hide their identity on purpose. Mm -hmm. But I'll just leave it there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I guess to sum it up then, I, I do think there's much more like we only know 25% of the story. We may only know 10% of the story. We don't know the whole story. Um, she's not being completely honest. Um, I, maybe we were on the same live where there was a person who knew her from the past. Were you on that? Yeah. yeah. So that is what is really fueling my thoughts. And then there was a, a live that followed that that said she, that showed her rap sheet. 
And did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, <laughs> I had that information prior to the live because I got, I be, I, I, I have, so I knew that, but I'm like, you know, I, I was like, is, is that relative to the situation or the story? I was like, no, but it, uh, so my thing was, okay, I had heard that she'd been in fights before years. Listen, I'm scary, but if I've gotten beaten up in a club once, I'm done with clubbing probably. Twice, definitely. And this seems to be a routine um, with her having been in fights as a grown woman and a doctoral student. What's up? It's just not adding up. It's just and and when I first heard the story, like most of us, especially women who look like us, we were devastated. I saw myself in that position. I saw my sisters, my, you know, other women in that position. And I was devastated. And of course I sprang into action and, you know, was mad at the world because we've been seeing women being assaulted like that. So even if it wasn't her, trust me, 10 other women were assaulted <laughs> that night. So it's not like this is, um, okay, so she lied and and maybe she's making a mockery of the situation that we get into all the time. So I'm pissed about that, that she um, took attention away from someone who really could have um, benefited from the attention or the GoFundMe that she has raised. It was up to 41,000. So I hope some, I hope that people can get their money back. Uh, if I were people who donated and I did not donate, I do not donate to any more things like this after some other incidents that have occurred that turned out to be fake. So I, I just don't. Um, so yeah, so that's my thing. I don't, I don't believe it. So that that uh, she didn't do a, a police report uh, for me that that's the number one thing if you're ever in a situation like that if you've got enough um you know people say they don't do police reports because they're afraid um but you weren't afraid to go live and, and then even if she just got hit and hit in her head and she was all confused and everything she figured out how to go live but she still didn't go to the police. And not so only did she figure out how to go live, my whole thing, and, and people, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I cringed at the way the web sleuths were digging through her social media yes. when it first happened. I cringed because I'm like, how is this? She used to be cringy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be her friend. I wouldn't be her associate. I wouldn't want to live next door to her. Hell, I'd quit my job if she worked at my place of employment. But is this really relevant to what has allegedly happened to her? Like, is it really relevant? But it seems that, you know, her character. And the things that she exaggerates about, it seems that it is relevant. Mm -hmm. It see, and, and as a matter of fact, I'm I'm gonna play a clip in just a second that she's done this before. She's done this exact thing before, which leads you to believe. And and if my first thought was, it made me think of Carly Russell. And a lot of people are like, oh, with Carly Russell, she didn't set black women back. When black women are in distress, whether they're kidnapped or trafficked or in danger or victims of whatever they're victims of, um, no one's going to believe them. And there was somebody that I watched that gave commentary. I won't name them. And they were like, oh, this, this doesn't really go against black women because anybody who wasn't believing black women... Who, who didn't believe black women in the past, they were already set on not believing them anyway. Mm -hmm. So no, this doesn't hurt us. But as these things continue to happen on social media, it does. It does. This woman is claiming she's black. However, she is Somali. Her yeah. own community has disassociated and exiled her. They have decided she was too all over the place. She uses racial slurs. She says the word nigga. And even native Somalian people don't like the word nigga because they feel like you're not like, like black, black. So you using it is like a slur. It makes them uncomfortable. 
They wanted her to stop using that word. They wanted her to do a couple of other things. Some people might find adjacent with res respectability politics, whatever the case is. The bottom line is she can't say, Somali, stand up and cap for me and hmm. cake for me. She cannot say that because they don't fuck with her. Therefore, mm -hmm. what she does is, I'm black, I'm black. And I'm I'm doing this voice because that's her, you know, her voice. I'm Horrible. Black. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's and it's are you really black or were you looking for somewhere to go after your own people exiled you? Yes, she has she has dark brown skin. Absolutely. And she's actually not a bad looking girl. She's a beautiful girl. I to think be so too. Completely honest with you. But her behavior and her patterns over time are very hideous. And so I do not feel like even the, the video that I'm going to play for y'all in a second, the way she says nigga, it don't even look. I was talking to somebody earlier today and I was like, look, everybody doesn't feel like the term nigga is a term of endearment, but some of us use it that way. Everybody doesn't feel like the term bitch between women. You know, girl might call you like, girl, bitch, guess what I found out? You be like, bitch, what? Some right. people find it to be disrespectful indefinitely. Right. But some people find it to be a term of endearment. Same with the word nigga. Right. Some mm -hmm. people don't like it. So it is what it is. But the way she says it and the way it rolls off your tongue, it doesn't even you. You call me. You'd be like, bitch, I got some tea. I'm like, oh, nigga, what? It don't sound like I'm <laughs> the way she says it. It sounds very like the way she learned it was and it, it, it doesn't sound like she's a part of us. Not to mention all of her other social media antics. When she, I'm black, I'm black. And I'm th like, there's no like black woman or black person that repeats their black 17 times in a row in order to prove a point about racism. Mm -hmm. She, uh, you know, I, and I don't want to start a diaspora war. I don't, you know, but I see the diaspora wars have been happening because some people have been lumping all Somalians together based off of her behavior. I want black women to know y'all are caping for a woman that doesn't even identify with it. her own community will not even stand up for her because she has is historically this egregious she's got behaviors that date back to 2012 that people on forums have been talking about she used Ooh, to Chan, let me jump in here she used to have a, a a channel with her and her male partner um then she became a part then she became a lesbian but a couple of years ago, she was saying she was strictly dick leave. <laughs> she just switches from the, the struggle Olympics are crazy. And I think I heard you say a word earlier about her being a predator. And that's so crazy you said that because I haven't heard anybody say that. But that's exactly what I was thinking before I went live. I was going to put it in this title. I just didn't have enough characters. You only get 100. She is a professional victim and a predator. She race, she weaponizes race and says that she's black, but she can't even say nigga in a way that doesn't sound offensive. Mm -hmm. She weaponizes race. She weaponizes religion. She has a history with GoFundMe where she's gathered over $60,000 from strangers on the internet for stuff just like this. And she goes and she antagonizes random employees at the Dollar Tree and at the Hilton and different hotels and Airbnb and antagonizes them and calls them names and blames everything on racism. Or, it's because I'm black. Like, no, you were smoking in the room or no, you damaged their property or no, you were in here being a disturbance to this establishment. And they mm -hmm. therefore asked you to leave and tried to enforce a rule. And you, oh, I'm recording because I'm black. I'm going to see you. You're going to lose your job. That uh -huh. like, no. The voice. You can't be everybody else for your entire life. You've been the victim your entire life. Like your entire, you've opened up, three, you've had three different GoFundMe's and collected over $60,000 from people. I was just talking to my homegirl before this live and I said, she's going to have a hard time finding a job because everybody knows who she is. But I said, you know what? It doesn't sound like a job is something that she's interested in. It sounds like she doesn't like to work. She wants to be in school and mm -hmm. make GoFundMe's based off of whatever she exaggerates or, 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 or makes up in her head. Well, so to the point that you were saying about not being authentic um, 
two Somali women I heard speak on panels today said she was, um, you know, you said it yourself, like 2008 black people or something. They said that she was, she was in, imitating what some Somalis or immigrants think black Americans, um, how they behave. Yeah. And that speaks to what you're saying about how her voice did, how the way she said nigga didn't sound authentic, didn't sound like us. And her behavior, uh, when we saw the videos in her skits that she did with people, and even that night when she had the swollen face, over-exaggerated, like she was um, a crisis actress. <laughs> so that's my thought. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it just it sucks and 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 for the the way that I you know what, I just have to play it. I mean, did I already send it to the computer? I just have to play it. The way she was saying nigga, it, it sounded so piercing. It wasn't the hard ER, but it felt like the hard ER based on her delivery. There's mm -hmm. something that just didn't seem Right, because the t only time we excuse nigga amongst our own community is if it's in the term of endearment. Like nigga, you you might say something unbelievable to me, and I'm like, you might say Funky the Nevis channel got deleted, and I might be like, nigga, you lying, right? Like I'm not insulting. Yes. You. I'm just Ooh. saying, like, oh my god, yes. are you serious? But the really? way he says it, it doesn't mm -hmm. sound like that. It Someone said blackface like in the comments. Is it really you? Totally cosplaying. Yeah, absolutely. So let me go ahead. I see we do. I'm going to play this clip. This clip is three minutes. If you want to stay on, you can. There's one other, other caller in the back. We can. I'll drop down. I'll drop down. It's okay. great talking to you. All right. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate your support and I'll see you in the chat. All right. Bye. All right. All right. So let me see. What was this? Okay, so I already had it downloaded. Okay, so I'm going to play this video so that y'all know exactly the... Is this the real video? Let's play this video to get y'all caught up to speed just to give some context around this situation in case everyone's not up to speed. Some of y'all might be in here and y'all don't have the latest update as to the video that was released. Um, this girl has done this verbatim before. This girl has done this and she got into a fight at the club with some girls. Um, I'm assuming it's because she was running her mouth, but I don't know why she actually, but some girls beat her up. And there was a woman that, that was actually there that evening and has screen recorded her video and says some girls beat her up at the club. And she got on Instagram and said, a man did this to me. It was a man. He was six feet tall and a black man did this to me. And I didn't even do anything. And it's like, does that not sound identical to the video that went live? That that she just, it sounds, it's the same thing. So you mean to tell me you was out here running your mouth and got your ass beat by some women? And then when they got the best of you, you went online and said it was a six foot tall, random, imaginary black man? I'm telling you right now, this mother is not real. Uh, okay. Well, this man just hit me in my face with a brick, and all these black men just watch, and they don't give a. Yeah, this man, this man hit me, grabbed a rock, and it hit me in my face. I would have given him my number, and all y'all just watch. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What y'all want y'all to do? I want y'all to be a man. I want y'all to be a man. You do something. Y'all gonna let a man hit me in my face. What have I ever done to anybody in my life to deserve this? I never did anything in my life to hurt anybody. Literally, a man asked me for my number. I said no, and he he picked up a brick in front of so many men and was like, what are you gonna do? And I told all these men like, yo, why is this man got a brick on my face? And he's, he's holding a brick and all these is watching and nobody does nothing.
and he hits me in my face, and they all just watch, and they let that get in the car. How is this okay? This is what y'all doing to women? Really, like, don't understand. Like, I'm just trying to take my friend out from five years ago. Like, literally, spending my whole money not bothering nobody. Like, what the fuck kind of shit is this? I'm in the parking lot just trying to buy some food. And, like, I'm literally like, why is this busted up on me like this? And I'm looking at all these. They literally let this do all of this. They let this, like, really, like, do all of that. I never thought it was going to happen, yo. Like, it's so wild. And he's going to get away with it. He got in the car. He got away. He's never going to get caught. He's going to move on. He's probably at an after party right now having a good time. Do you feel good about yourself doing this to a woman? For what? Like, all this violence against black women is not okay. Like, what do I do to deserve this? Like, how? what is my defense against this? Still, it's been 12 hours. I'm in the hospital. I'm getting discharged. I do have a concussion, so I gotta take it slow for a week. Unfortunately, I don't have the kind of job that's gonna give me that kind of grace. So, you know, I still got a mother, I still gotta teach, I still gotta work. <laughs> I really just want the best for everybody, and I don't know why people wanna kill me. I can't even chew food the next week. <sighs> I had a vacation that I planned six months ago for my birthday I'm so afraid like I'm so afraid like why do people want to hurt me so bad I really love my community and just to know that like people would hate me to this level to this kind of level of violence So that's that, okay? <clears throat> Here's one quick clip that we need to watch. Y'all just saw that video of her outside saying, why would they do this? A man did this to me. Why would you hit a... Look at this video. They just try to beat me up to me. You grew up and they... Okay, I'm sorry. I, I failed to give y'all the backstory. The backstory is that this video is from 2020. And a woman came out who was actually her friend at that time, who was with her, who screen recorded this from her Instagram. Because she put, you know, Instagram stories only last 24 hours, right? So she screen recorded this because she thought it was bizarre from her Instagram stories because she was present for the thing. She went to the club with this girl. They got separated somehow. The girl was trying to get back into the club. She couldn't get back into the club. And come to find out, she told her, some some girls jumped me. But she went on Instagram and said, what? A black man attacked her. So that's a, a, a little bit of context. Let's watch. And if you haven't already hit thumbs up on the video, baby, what is he waiting for? Don't make me go get Joe Biden on you. Don't make me do it, Okay. Why? 350 people here, 148 likes, something ain't adding up, but let's go. They just try to beat me up to me. You grew up and they mad because you trying to fucking be somebody. They mad because you trying to be somebody. I'm trying to be a doctor and they mad. Look what they did to me. Look what they did to me for no reason. They ain't gonna beat me up. I'm 30 years old. They go. Okay, for no reason, for no reason. She's saying they did it for no reason. Everybody just beating and hitting on you and attacking you for no reason. Like everybody, every couple of years, every six months, it's the same variables for no reason and you showing your face. Like, no. I... They mad because you're trying to be somebody. I'm trying to be a doctor and they mad. Look what they did to me. Look what they did to me for no reason. They ain't gonna beat me up. I'm 30 years old. They gonna beat me up. Grown ass niggas try to beat me up. Grown ass niggas try to beat me up for no reason. 
look at me. I'm not a bad person. Y'all know that. Y'all know I'm a good person. And they try to do this to me. Guess what? It's up and down for a real nigga. But you gonna be your pussy all your life, nigga. All your life, you gonna be your pussy. All your life, you gonna be your pussy. And I fought for myself because I'm a gay ass bitch. What's up? It's up and down for a real nigga. But you will be a loser all your life, nigga. Trying to beat up a woman for fucking leaving and doing something with your life. When your ass is fucking a loser all your life, nigga. You can't beat me up. You can't. I'm good. They gave me a real good shine of them. Grown ass niggas. Over fucking six feet tall. Losers. Loser ass niggas. Up and down for a real nigga. But you gonna be a loser all your life, nigga. They try to roll us on your wrist of plain giant. So she can't hold her own and or she doesn't have enough situational awareness to realize if you ain't got back up and you by yourself and you pick and beef with a group of six women you're outnumbered you get your ass beat by a woman or multiple women and then you blame it on an imaginary six foot tall man i you know what this really puts some of the some of the, the the commonality the things that are said throughout the me too movement believe all victims it puts statements like that to shame because it could have easily been your uncle your father your grandfather your cousin or your brother that was out there in that vicinity when at this particular incident that we just shown which seems like it's the same video from the other night because she's done this before hello are y'all woke yet do I need to shake the table and make my camera wiggle like other people without camera stability? And I hate that sometimes. And I hate seeing camera. Do I need to shake the table? She did this in 2020, got her ass beat by some women and blamed it on a non-existent black man. Hello. So the whole believe all victims Let's say it was your uncle or your cousin or your brother or your father or your grandpappy out there that evening just walking past in the vicinity or even maybe just said hi to her who was recklessly blamed and we're just supposed to believe the victim. But if your grandpappy or your cousin or your brother was on the receiving end of such an accusation, she would have pointed out anybody just to prove her claim because she's a documented liar. She's a liar. And I didn't think that anything else pertaining to her behavior, albeit egregious, <laughs> her behavior was disgusting. <laughs> like, let's, let's set one thing straight. Her behavior, even outside of this, is disgusting. And let's not even get into her criminal record and how she's a prostitute. Her behavior was disgusting. But sometimes the believe all victims trope, sometimes it can be dangerous. I just seen a video of a woman accusing her boyfriend that was breaking up with her of SAing her child because he was leaving her. And he had a video of her coaching the child. He touched you, didn't he? Child said no three times. He, he, he made you feel uncomfortable and he need, right? And he took... And then finally got the baby to say yes after the seventh time of badgering. So some people can get vindictive when they understand that the hatred for black men is so powerful that without any proof, they can say or put anything out there and society is going to ride with it because black men, black people are villains, quote unquote, right? So nah, nah. And I feel like there's a greater part to this conversation. While I feel like this girl is trash, I feel like what she's been trying to do over the years is trash. There is a greater conversation to be had about how unsafe black women are in general. 
because this situation, while we don't even know if the black man that she's saying bricked her in the face, we don't even know if he exists. We don't even know if that motherfucker is real. We don't know if he's real. We have seen a surge in the conversations about black men who are saying, that's why I ain't protecting bitches at all. I ain't protecting, I ain't jumping into no woman. You know what I mean? And because, and again, this is why I don't consider this girl to be black. She has her own Somalian community. They disowned her and therefore she started using our cape to hide under and do her oppression Olympics bullshit and race bait and religious bait. And discrimination bait and sexism bait. Then she became a part of the LGBT community. So she started baiting on that too and weaponizing all of those things, right? But we did see a lot of men make it overtly clear that they are not willing to protect black women. That's the part of the conversation that I feel like is important. You know, we're in a trashy place in society. When even me, myself, and several other women are saying, I was saying this before I even seen other people saying it in their videos, is do I give my number out to men I'm not interested in when I'm out? Hell yeah. Sometimes. Because I'm worried about them following me to my car. I'm worried about them discreetly following me to my house. Will I be able to get my keys out in time enough to avoid a potential attack because their ego is bruised? So yeah, I'm going to get my number out. And on the spot, I'm going to say, yeah, call, text me right now so we'll come through so I can lock you in, so I can save your number and know who you is. I'm not saving your number, baby. I'm blocking you. I'm just trying to get home for the night. You can stand outside that, outside of wherever when these niggas approach you and say, oh, I shouldn't have to give my number out. Of course you shouldn't. That's common sense. No, you shouldn't feel obligated to give your goddamn number out. But are you going to make it home tonight, though? Just in case I don't make it home tonight. Let me make love to you for the last time, baby. Want to teach a moment like the last. Because, baby, you're all that I have. Just in case. Oh, don't get me started on Jaheem, but no, like, for, like society is so dangerous when you got women that are teaching themselves to protect themselves by giving their number out so that they can block it. Society ain't getting no better. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Okay. So. I, I, I just like this situation is bizarre. Another thing is she says she had a concussion. She ain't riding an ambulance. So you drove yourself to the hospital with the concussion. That's another thing that I just can't make sense of. However, thank you all for supporting the stream. However, you support the stream, hit thumbs up. If you want to send one, two, three, five dollars to the cash app. You can, again, dollar sign T-H-A, not T-H-E. Make sure you proofread and double check. Support the stream in any way possible. We do have another caller behind the scenes. Does anybody else want to call in? Can somebody put, put a 99 in the chat if you want to call in and you don't have the link? We're going to get into a caller right now and continue with our coverage and our conversation because I do have some additional points to make about this situation and everything that it entails. But we are going to get into our caller that is backstage right now. So let's go. You're tuned in to Jane, the plainish Jane. Be sure to thumbs up the video and subscribe. And let's get into it. What up, caller? You are live on the air. What are your thoughts about the brick faced? Victim, gay, whatever you want to call this. What are your thoughts? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Because it's my first time calling in, so yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. How you doing? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Um. Okay. I just want to say my issue. Um. About the Carry On Franklin situation. I'm gonna be honest. I can't relate to Carry On about mental health and stuff like that. I'm gonna tell you why. Cause um. 
Um, I go through a depression a lot because um, I've been sickly for about for about 15 years because um, I have a lot of uh, complications from the cancer and from radiation. And um, I had 10 surgeries and um, I, ha I have two bags. So I've been sickly since I was like 23 years old. So so I've been going through that depression ever since then. And I suffered some mental health. I just don't talk about it too much. So, yeah. So I can relate to that. And what I think with carry on situation, I think he needs to open up more. And I think uh, he should do more videos about mental health and how to help people on how to deal with it. Okay, so you think him opening up is the answer. For me, I feel like him opening up is a part of the problem because I feel like everything that Carry On is dealing with intimately and deep down inside isn't everyone's business. And sometimes you can become very blinded. You can become very blinded by the attention you're getting online because even if you're a train wreck and you're a hot mess, people are still going to watch because they want to watch that. I, yeah. Me personally, I feel like Carry On is fed by the numbers and the people. And sometimes people will falsely root you on because they trolling. So they like, oh, sh share more of this or, or do more of that when really they just want to see you self-destruct in front of them. And they're just giving you that push under the guise of encouraging you to make yourself vulnerable and share your personal information. So I feel like Carry On sharing so much of his business, like he did when he exposed him and his father's phone call and the public's reaction to it, I feel like was enabling. I feel like it enabled him. Um, because some people, when they see social media, they're like, oh, I got 5,000 hits. Oh, I got 8,000 hits. And you go see other people. There's somebody like the Pascal Show. Shout out to him. He did a video on, on Carry On Franklin. It got 206,000 views. So even if the person doesn't get as many views on their platform, Carry On don't get 206,000 views on his page and on his stuff. But other people do when they go live about it. So when they feel like when they see that they're the topic of conversation and when they see the number of views, they somehow feel like people want this. Let me give them more of that. And really all carry on is giving us is his personal business. And it's not our bit in his family business. And it's not our business. It's not our business. So I feel like it enables carry on to see. And especially because it seems he's gotten worse since he's reached the spotlight, for example, before, okay, what what got him? Because bad bad behavior is rewarded quite frequently in today's society, right? Carry on right. Franklin wasn't affiliated with any brand, any company, any business, any network, any anything when he first released that phone call of his father cussing him out. And sometimes your parents gonna cuss you out, even when you an adult, and it might not be right. But the recording of it may not also be appropriate for social media. However, Carry On shared it because he felt like, oh, people want to see me as a victim in this. And he shared it. And, and that was that. And it, that. That really wasn't for public consumption. However, as soon as Carry On shared that, it took about seven, eight months to a year. And then he's getting deals and offers from networks. Hey, come on this show. You're causing controversy with your family. You're Kirk Franklin's son. And so he gets on the show and so he he feels like, okay, my first hoorah and how I even got here was the fact that I shared some of my personal, my family's personal business and I didn't give myself or my family any privacy. So let me continue this. Let me continue sh oversharing and exploiting my family and myself and maybe I'll get more opportunities and more of a bag and more money. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, he ended up getting paid based off of the visibility that he received and that he had earned based off of exploiting he and his family's family issues. So I feel like it's enabling him and it's not helping him. And I feel like the proof of that is the fact that that was a year and a half, almost two years ago. And he still hasn't gotten any better. All he's done much like any other reality star, 
is jump into the habit of exploiting his family business because he was rewarded with it in the past. It's the same reason Jocelyn Hernandez won't stop fighting people on camera. She's constantly rewarded from Zeus Network and giving bonuses and checks because she's acting so crazy and sharing things that's really none of our business. That's how love yeah. and love works. That's how Zeus works. That's how whatever. So I, me personally, I don't think that, 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 uh, I don't think that carry on sharing his family business is conducive. I feel like he wants to exploit it. I feel like he wants to make it one sided. And the thing about it is I do feel like there is some wrong doing, like I said earlier, I do feel like his family did him wrong. I do feel like his family did him wrong, but I Absolutely. also feel like he's done some things wrong as well. But carry on likes to paint a one-sided narrative um, and make it seem like he's innocent. And some people fall for it and, and the networks fall for it. So I, I, I feel like he's being enabled because there are some people that will be in his comments, keep sharing. And you can tell by the way that they word it. They don't mean it in a way of, Oh, stay true to you. They mean it in a way of keep sharing this fucking train wreck. This is a mess. All of y'all are a mess. But they just, they want to say keep sharing it with the smiley emoji just because they want it to keep, they want that entertainment to keep coming to them. You know what I mean? So right. I feel like it's enabling him. Long story short. Yeah. But also, um, also I wanted to say this is, um, he did say that um him him and his father they have like a toxic relationship cuz I'm gonna be honest with you I can relate to that situation cuz me and my dad we have a toxic relationship cuz I haven't seen my dad since I was 11 years old my own dad didn't want nothing to do with me so I don't know why I get it and and again that's him pandering that is you know what that's called that's called a trauma bond right I had mm -hmm. issues with my mom too, but I don't sit on here and share the, the specifics. I, at the end of the day, I'll let you know, sometimes you need to go no contact, but I don't sit on here and share everything because you know what that's called? It's called trauma bonding. And if there are other people who have experienced anything similar to what carry on has experienced from any family member, it doesn't have to be a father. It could be a mother, brother, cousin, sister, step sibling or whatever and they just automatically relate to it it's no different than a person coming out and saying i've been sa sexually assaulted he's trauma bonding with people and he knows some people are going to throw logic out the window and simply say you know what i got problems with my family too so i'm gonna stick with carol and the truth of the matter is i do have issues with one of my parents however I'm also going to exercise logic at the same time when I take in what carry on's doing, because there's a difference between you're sharing all of your information with the public and also telling the public not to talk about your information. That doesn't make sense. You're not looking for a solution. You're looking for people to shame your father and, and, and coddle you. That's what you're looking for. You're not looking for real discourse. You're upset when people have really, y'all, y'all in my business. You made it our business. Hello, how do we find yeah, this? Yeah, absolutely. I know? agree with you on like, that, right? You shared it. And so if you don't 100% agree with Carry On, based on how he's put this stuff out, because he's put it out thinking that, well, they've got to shame him and, and prop me up as a victim and coddle me, then whatever. And, you know, sometimes you have to realize that it's not about trauma bonding with anybody. You might have a similar issue, but what is your problem resolution or why aren't you sharing it with the Internet? I know I don't want a million people talking about the issues I have with my mother. All the Internet knows is me and my mother bump heads often. That's it. I will let people know that. me. But do you think I'm about to share a recording with the public? Do you think I'm about like, no, I don't want that type of discourse. I don't want that type of anything, but I do want people to know that it is possible to live your life and, and be at odds with your parent and still live somewhat of a peaceful life and feel like you're not obligated to, quote unquote, obey your parents your entire life, even when you're an adult. That's my point. And so I keep it vague like that. 
but people like carry on he'll get into specifics and get mad when you bring them specifics into play and it's like well you know you're not completely innocent either you know so it's it it carry on he he has some growing up to do in my opinion i do feel like he does need some help and i i do have empathy for him but i i'm not going to bed and being like i, I um and, and and making it seem like he's right all the time because some of the stuff he does is very exploitative and it's one-sided. And and therefore, sometimes when I, you know, when I cover him, I have to be crucial of him too because you can tell by the way he's putting out these one-sided recordings. He's, he's releasing recordings when his father went over the edge and was responding to his nastiness and disrespect, but he's not playing the part of the court that got his father to that point. His father was responding to something. He only gave half of that recording. And so, you know, for that reason, I'm like, okay, you know, you can be a victim of something and still be manipulative at the same time. And you can still need help. And your feelings about what your family put you through can still be very valid. But putting out a one-sided narrative and trying to exploit your peoples and stuff like that, it's not. And then, you know, his behavior after this doesn't help. It can lead one to believe, well, uh, you can look at this mugshot alone and see that something's not right. You know, you can look at the mugshot alone down here at the bottom right. Something's not oh. right. There have been several lives that he has done and he's not in his right state of mind. You can tell he's gone off something and it didn't seem like he was drunk and just having fun. It seemed like he was gone off of some other type of substance or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I see he um, got some gray hair. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it. Uh, again, I'm not, I'm not saying either party is innocent. I'm not well, saying yeah. either party is 100% guilty. I'm just saying that I could tell that Carry On was trying to manipulate the public in general because it was it was basically like, oh, this that gospel singer that y'all love. Listen to him cuss me out. But what led him to cuss you out? You know, all the time when our parents cuss us out, are they are are they right or wrong, or are they caring about what what led him to that point? He manipulated that media and only you know. So yeah, I I I couldn't get with it, but I, I I can still see carry on side of it though. I do feel like he needs help, and I feel like he needs some. I need feel like he needs constant therapy, and somebody to listen to mm -hmm. what it is he's feeling and that he's going through because I mm -hmm. feel like he has some unresolved trauma. Yeah, um, I do agree with you on that. I do kind of feel like um. He do probably do need to see a therapist or a psychiatrist. Also, he did a video with this um, YouTuber, I think, was was it a while ago? Not that long ago or a couple of years ago. Uh, what's her name? Uh, he did a video with her. Uh, she do like the, uh, she teach like all the narcissist videos like in black families. You know who I'm, you know who I'm talking about? Too many people come to name. I ain't trying to be shady. So, no, I don't want to name I'm trying, uh, Yeah, I'm trying to be careful with that because I don't want to say names. I just say a YouTuber. Yeah, they did a, um, you know, just a respect of their name. So, yeah, she's a YouTuber. He did a video with her about narcissists. Uh, yeah, and, and, and again, everybody else is not. It, it's not that you can't be a victim of something, but you have to accept what you've done, especially as an adult, to contribute to that. And I, I, I want to say Carry On was born in 88, so he's like 35 years old. You know, it's only but so old you can get and, and keep blaming stuff on your childhood and your upbringing. Um, every, you might be able to blame a couple of habits on that if you're, you know, but your your whole being, the, the reason you're a failure, and not to call him a failure, but, you know, the, the, the reason you have terrible skills in certain areas, like, it's only but so long you can blame that on on your on your on your peoples. It's only but so long. Like, and this is coming from a person who I feel like my parents are responsible for a lot of my mentality. I feel like I've got more good out of it than bad. 
but I can't blame anything that I'm doing as a woman that's, you know, 30 years old. I can't blame that on my on, on my parents. I'm th I moved out 13 years ago. Like I cannot blame that on them. I have to take account, you know, but you know, you have these cry Reese ass niggas that are like Tyrese, that are like baby boy, and nothing is their fault. Everything is society, the world, and with the world and with their parent and, and what's done to them. And I I, I I can't get with that, but I can yeah. spot personalities like that from a mile away. And also, um, Carrie Young's mom, she um did an interview um about her son Carrie Young. I I can't remember what she said something like that but um i remember her saying that carry on's mom said that uh her and kirk her and kirk franklin are still cool because they you know they got carry on together you know they still i'm not sure are they friends or co-parent but i don't i'm gonna be honest do you think it's a good idea for uh carry on's mom and kirk franklin to still co-parent because carry on is a grown man he almost 40. i feel like co-parenting should never end I feel like if you really have a date where you like, let's not co-parent no more. I feel like that's strange. <laughs> I don't give a shit if your baby, if your child is 35. There's nothing wrong with two parents of a child talking about the development of their spawn. Like the baby, the child might be 30. The child, see, I'm still saying child because, because you always going to be a child to your parent. So the child right, absolutely. You know, might be 35, but if you need to talk to your parent about a change you might see, they might be opening up to one parent and not the other. And y'all might be brainstorming on ways to get through to them in a way where you feel like, well, I couldn't do it, but you more so can do it. So let's talk about it because this is what I've seen and what I witnessed. I feel like there's nothing... There, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and I feel like if parents do have a cutoff limit to co-parenting, that's strange. And I feel like y'all better asses should have never laid down in a bed together. If y'all can't stand each other that much that y'all can't even have a phone call about your child. I don't care if the child is 40. Like if y'all can't stand each other that much that y'all can't have a phone call about, you know, she he he or she is 32 but i feel like they're in a weird place something going on you realize their behavior you want to try to have a conversation today and then tomorrow i'll call her and try to so that we can cur like what's wrong with co-parenting you know at a at a at a certain you know at a certain age so yeah i do know that they've tried to co-parent and in that regard i I feel for them because when somebody is mentally ill, much like, which reminds me of Tyrese in his interview at the Breakfast Club the other day, when somebody is mentally ill or not in their right state of mind, right? Because you don't have to be mentally ill to not be in your right state of mind. You could be on them other type of drugs. And for me and what I witnessed from Carry On and following his Instagram closely is it did seem like he was on like psychedelics and stuff, like shrooms and other like things. And it's difficult and I know personally, based on my behind the scenes connections, that Carry On's family does struggle trying to reel him back in because he is, uh, he, you know, he he's mentally sometimes, you know, far gone, and it can be difficult to bring people like that back in. Everybody's not equipped. To you know, to deal with somebody that's having a a psychotic break or a, a drug, like da 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 or whatever. So it can be difficult. They can try, but you know, sometimes people get worn out. And I know I've tried with um, a friend and a family member who was far gone based on drug usage, which ultimately ended up affecting their mental in the long run. And sometimes it's collateral damage. It's like trying to reach into a blender. Like, oh, let me tell you what you're doing, not right. And I, you, you getting hurt in the, in, in the interim because you're trying to help somebody. And it's, I don't have the skills, nor do I have the collateral bandwidth to be able to allow you 
to hurt me or talk to me or hurt my family any type of way because I'm trying to help and you just lashing out at anybody who doesn't agree with you. And if you're trying to help somebody that's going down the wrong path, then clearly they don't agree with you because they feel like that wrong path is right. You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, it, 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 it can become difficult. That's why when I was listening to the Breakfast Club interview yesterday morning with Tyrese and he was expecting Envy to step in when he was having all these psychotic breaks when Tyrese had disrespected Envy's wife already. And Tyrese was like, but you still should have checked on. Everybody's not qualified to deal with somebody that's having a mental break. And that's what Tyrese was having. And a mental break and a, and a drug psychotic rant or rage, they look very similar and they're very unhinged and unpredictable. And so I don't feel like people should feel obligated to throw themselves in the blender for somebody else when they can see everybody and everyone else around that person has tried to tell them. At least seven to 11 people have tried to tell them and they bit their heads off. And I'm like, oh, I'm, let, let me be person number eight or person number 12 and go ahead and try and tell them that they need to get it to get and get my fingers and my head cut off too like no i have a life to live mm -hmm. well, and this might hurt my feelings too so you know i mm -mm. yeah but also um when i watched the uh carry on and the lady this youtuber that do like the narcissist video right she her and carry on also said like in the black community um we need to uh we all need to discuss like in the black community about about mental about mental health issue in the black community why do you think um why black black community don't like talking about mental illness it's not that we don't like talking about it we do like talking about it for one mm -hmm. we we are ashamed right like as a community, as a people, as a race, you know, we're hesitant to outwardly speak about our weaknesses. That's number one. I feel like that's human nature, but it's definitely a black nature because there's so much negative. But also, you know, you can talk about it, but everybody's mental illness doesn't look the same. And then sometimes you can get into oppression Olympics. Sometimes you'll end up witnessing oppression Olympics. Um, when you listen to Tyrese, all you hear is oppression Olympics. Um, sometimes we carry on when I watch him. I'm, I'm listening to the oppression Olympics. As soon as they feel like people don't agree with them, it's like, oh, well, I be thinking about killing myself. Or, you know, and, and you know what? If that's what you're thinking, and you're trying to get people to gravitate towards you. Everybody's not equipped to deal with a suicidal person. Let's just say if you if what you were saying was was true. But sometimes it's like people be losing a battle. You'll have two people having a conversation about mental health. And one person is like, this is what I deal with. Another person. And you'll find that every, every person is what I was dealing with was this bad. Oh, well, what I was dealing with was this bad. Oh, yeah, there was a time what I was dealing with was this bad. But then, and then you'll have the 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 big joker, excuse me, of the conversation. That's yeah. Well, I was yeah, but I was trying to kill myself. And, and it's like okay, now you didn't kill the vibe because and and not that the vibe needs to remain alive. Like if that's how you really felt, I. Right, but you would have led with that if that was truly. It it sometimes you can just hear and feel energy wise, and you have to use your discernment when it becomes a disingenuous conversation and when people are playing oppression Olympics with you. And sometimes it can become that. It can become that when you are having those conversations with certain people. Sometimes, and, and Tyrese being a perfect example. I was there for you, Envy. You weren't there for me. Oh, but I, and he goes through all the arguments. And then when he, he and Envy said, you disrespected my wife. How was I supposed to be your brother and check on you? And you just, you said some foul shit to my wife. I had to take a step back from you because I didn't want to pop you. Oh, but I did this for you. And 18 arguments later. Oh, 
Okay, well, I was about to kill myself. Like, uh, all right, you know, like sometimes people weaponize the conversation and it's just annoying as hell because you're trying to be genuine. You're trying to create and engage in, at the very least, engage in community with your own people. Mental health is definitely a thing for everybody that exists, but especially Black people, what our ancestors have dealt with, what we've been passed down through the generations and things of that nature. But sometimes you can't trust that people are going to have a genuine conversation if they are going to, um, you know, weaponize the struggles. Men not supposed to cry, so I cry. Like, Tyrese, no. Like, you are a narcissist, an attention seeker. I cry and people don't want to... I, you, it becomes difficult to trust. And then we, if you try to call people out on it, you're blaming, you're insensitive, you're all of these things. So yeah, we should have the conversation about mental health more. We do try to have that conversation a bit more. Um, but the conversation can get out of control quite often, honestly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And do you remember it was a time that black people didn't like going to see therapy? Yeah. I think yeah, I hear more and more black people seeing therapy now. Yeah, that is a good thing. I think that that is another thing that's passed down to us. It was something that was passed down uh to me in particular. Um you know, I had a lot of uh like issues growing up in a house with my single mother and um I wanted to talk to somebody I wanted to talk to a counselor she was always like don't you sit down and tell them what be going on in this house I'm like well what the hell is the point of me going to counseling for if they say I need counseling you saying yeah you need to talk to someone because yeah don't I'm supposed to tell them what's going on on the playground it's something about trusting people with your out you know how parent black parents be like what happens in this house stays in this house yeah and they take it they they take that really far they don't want to be judged but for me I started counseling three and a half weeks ago and I will say it was difficult and there is a stigma against us getting help and getting therapy sometimes you talk about therapy and people be like fuck you need therapy for bitch everybody can benefit from therapy are you kidding me like right. everybody can benefit from that but there's such a stigma but that's why i say it proudly because if you're going to judge me because i get therapy then i don't want you around me anyway if me saying i get therapy out loud makes you want to take a step back from me i hope you take all the steps back you need to because i don't want to have anything to do with you because there's nothing wrong with working through my issues, what's going on in my mind and addressing things in myself that I couldn't see alone. Not to mention my insurance covers it and it's free. So mm. there is a stigma about therapy. It's unfortunate. Um, I feel like Black people know that, that I, I, the older Black people, the older community that really has an issue with it, I feel like they um, they know that they have issues they know that they do and engage in problematic things. And the reason why they don't feel comfortable sitting on the couch and being open about those things is because they know it's wrong. They don't want to put it into words. They don't want to articulate it. They don't want to verbalize. They don't want anything. But they know there's something wrong. They know there's something not right. They know if they sit on that couch and they say exactly what they're saying to their kids, or exactly what they're doing or saying, they know that the therapist is going to be like, okay, well, okay, you know, we have a problem. If they really felt like what they were doing was right, they would feel like, okay, this is just checks and balance. Imagine doing everything right and your boss looking, looking over your work after you're done. What do you have to be worried about when you know it's right? Right. When you know that there's nothing wrong and you've done it perfectly. If not, you've done it above average. But when you know that something's wrong, you'll make other subconscious excuses in your mind and in your psyche to not get the help or to not hear 
the criticism that is necessary to change the way that you're thinking. They're not open to criticism. That's why there's this meme that I have. Where is it at? It's right here. Here's the meme. Let a, let, a, let a black kid sit down and tell their parents what they feel like they did wrong or what really hurt them or how your parents need to be accountable for how they hurt. Here's the first thing your parents going to do. I, I want to see it. I, want, I, 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 don't want, I don't want to talk about. Oh, so I wasn't perfect. Oh, so I wasn't the perfect parent. Like they, they don't want to even deal or start down the road of accountability of what they've done wrong, to be completely honest. And that is why they're so allergic to a therapist or somebody from the outside looking in. At the end of the day, they're really just a third party that's impartial. And if, if you really felt like whatever the dynamic is, parent to kid, parent to husband, whatever the case is, if you really felt like you were right, you would gladly tell them, right? Because it's the same way they sit and they'll call up your aunts and your uncle. Guess what such and such did? And you got to listen to your parents calling your aunts and your uncles and your grandparents. Guess what they did? Because they know those people are going to side with how they think. If they mm -hmm. felt like they could use the insurance and get the free uh, third party view from it. And if they really felt like 100% like they right, they would gladly share that shit. But no, they, mm -hmm. they want people who are going to agree. And they know if they call your aunts, your uncles, your older cousins and whoever, those are people that are going to agree with them by default based on whatever their previous, however they built their their, their relationship, right? She had a nerve mm -hmm. to deal with a honest and got comments on, on the thing. Or I, I asked her to clean the bathroom. I asked her if she wanted to clean the bathroom and she told me no. Well, why the fuck did you ask her a question? If you didn't want her to maybe say no, and she had the nerve, and so now she and you know, you know, if they really felt like they were right and they were getting help from a professional for free, for free, they mm -hmm. would hear it. They're not really open to that feedback and that criticism and doing things the right way, and 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 that's really the bottom line. And that's why when I went into therapy, I. Went in there, not trying. I, I'm not holding anything back. I'm not holding anything back because I'm not here to waste my time or yours. I'm here because I want help. I'm not here to be like, like I'm on the, you know, you on the job interview, you always lying to some extent, whether it's your posture, your body language, right. your experience, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, you're speaking proper, you're you're not letting them know the real you. You're giving them a representative of who you are so that you can get a fucking job. You're not really mm -hmm. giving them like the real you and how you chill out at six o'clock on you know, eight o'clock on a Friday night. But when I went into therapy, I decided I'm going to tell her everything. Otherwise, I'm not going to get the benefits that I really need from this. Now, mind you, full disclaimer, I'm only two therapy sessions in. I started three weeks ago, but okay. um, it is something that has been so beneficial to me lately. And I realized I'm not going to get nowhere if I go ahead. Cause I was, I was asking my other friends, like, should I go in there? Like uptight? Should I like, like lay everything on her? Is it going to be too much for her? Like, is it, like, should I be up to it? And they were just like, and my close friends were just like, you know, just relax and tell her whatever. And then I finally omitted all of my friends' advice. And I was just like, you know what? If you want real results, you're going to have to give her the real you. I mean, sure, my therapist was black and a woman. I refused to sit down to talk to a man about my issues. I refused to sit down to talk to a white person about my issues. You have to be black and you have to be a woman because right, you need I understand to, be able that. to relate to my experience in some way, shape, or form. I refuse to have to explain certain nuances to you that you just don't get because you can't relate to my experience. But, um, yeah, I just felt like in order for me to get the most out of it, I just need to be 100% real with her. And that's that's what I've done because I want real results. I'm not running from the criticism from a licensed therapist and I'm using my insurance in order to do so. I'm not running from that. But some of our, 
our, our parents, our mothers and our great grandmothers, they they run from that. They don't they don't want to hear about how wrong they did you while you was coming up. All they gonna say is, I survived. Oh, I wasn't perfect. Oh, I wasn't a perfect parent. I survived. Okay, you survived, but how bitter are you present day? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> you survived. Like what? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, when um, speaking like with me, I had therapy when I was a kid because um, I had a lot of issues growing up as a kid because um, I had like a, um, I have like a learning disability, though, but uh, I function pretty well. I'm real high functioning. Um, only thing um, my reading level is like um, is like a, a six or seven grade level and my math is like is like a seventh grade level and eighth grade level but um i can't uh hard words i can't pronounce real real well so when i'm on live some words do be hard for me to pronounce so um but most of those therapists i had when i was a kid they were white and i'm gonna be honest some of them couldn't understand me so they would like ask me was i hearing voices and i kept telling them no they kept asking me and asking me mm. Mm. That is hard. I see it. Yeah, that's 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 why I I don't want to explain cultural nuances and I don't want to explain all of that to a therapist. That's why I needed somebody that looked like me. Um, I I I I just did like no, mm -mm, absolutely not. But um, that mm, that is crazy. And um, that kind of did make me uncomfortable when they asked me that. Cause I'm like, I'm like, what they ask me, do, do they think I'm real, real crazy when I hear voices? Cause I told them I, I don't hear voices, you know, it just made me uncomfortable to be honest with you. I don't blame you. Cause uh, it's. Uh, child, that's, yeah. And part of me don't know was they being racist or trying to make fun of me. I was a kid back then, so I I didn't know that, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I completely, and, and it can, it can be gaslighting and you don't even know what's going on at that time. It's like, it's like, are they racist or are they prejudiced or are they, the, and I'm, I don't want to be wondering all that. Like, I want to be able to trust my therapist without thinking that they are omitting me for whatever reason based on my my gender or my race and that's why I made sure that my gender and my race align with me and I knew that a, a black woman is going to get some of my hurt and frustration in a way that a black male there I'm sorry a white male therapist or even a white woman therapist might not get they not they're not gonna understand the nuances. We have so much feng shui to us as black people. Body language, inside jokes, a certain look that we might give one another. You might not even know this person from a can of paint. And the certain look mm -hmm. you're right. absolutely you right. Like you just get it, you know. So I'm I don't want to explain shit like that to a therapist when I'm I'm here venting. We only get one hour sessions, so it. It be what it be. It be what it be. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I'm sorry though if I was talking so long, you know, I was just, you know, just in my feelings. That's all. Just want to say my opinion. No problem. I do appreciate you calling in and no worries about, you know, talking. It's it's your experience is not just your experience, so to speak. There are other people who have experienced the same thing, if not something damn near similar, you know, to you. So I think that this dialogue is still very much helpful with you sharing your ex experience and even your apprehension with talking to certain people. Um, and I will say thanks to Carry On for this discussion, but that ain't going to mean nothing to him, child. He's sitting in jail. Who the hell going to get him out? Oh, he but, in jail now. I, I just found out he in jail. He back in jail. Yeah, girl, he got arrested. Really? I ain't hear nothing about that. I, I really, girl, I, girl, girl. What is going on? That that, that is what stemmed this whole discussion. 
<laughs> yeah, I know what the mental. Uh, I know we. Were, I was just wanted to talk about carry on about the mental health because I just saw him on um on um Instagram not that long ago. It's just, uh, out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? <laughs> not bad. I'm sorry. Not bad. <laughs> it is all right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I do appreciate you calling in. And you know what? I'm grateful because I don't talk about my therapy as much in the public sense. I talk about my therapy more behind the paywall for people who join the membership. But the way that our conversation kind of like unfolded, it led me to kind of talking about it. And then you spoke about the shame that black people have with and about therapy. And it, that that is a real thing that needs to be addressed. We really need to remove the stigma. Um, we really need to remove the stigma as far as right. therapy is a bad thing. It's not going to do anything <clears throat> but make you more comfortable and more self-aware um, you know, of yourself. So I'm grateful that you you peaked in and based on your talking points, it led to that part of the conversation, which is very important to me um to share on my platform. So I'm grateful that you called in. Don't think that, you know, you know, your your talking points did any any harm to the stream because I, I really don't think it did. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for letting me let me uh, join in. I appreciate that so much. Thanks. No problem. Thank you for calling in. I look forward to hearing from you again, and I'll see you in the comments. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Right. Take care. You too. All right. So we had we had another caller. However. That caller had just hung up right before. We actually had a couple callers. They just got a little impatient. We had a couple of callers. Um, so I'll drop the link again, and then I'll I'll finish my thoughts about the Brit Girl. Okay, so with the Brit Girl, honestly, like I said earlier. I feel like <laughs> at first when it was the Carly Russell thing and people were like, oh, this is taken away from people, the believability of actual black male, uh, black female victims of, of harmful crimes. Um, and then someone was like, no, it doesn't take away from them. Because anybody that doesn't believe a black woman when she's in a crime never wanted to believe her in the first place, right? They already don't believe us, so this ain't contributing to nothing. However, I feel like with stuff like this and with this girl in particular claiming that she's Black and really she's Somali and her own people exiled her, I feel like it is contributing because I was listening to... I was listening to... Yanni's point about it, and I only listened to Yanni's point about it because I was watching Tanya TKO and Tanya TKO played Yanni's point um, in, in, in reference to this. And she was like, listen, I'm giving y'all this update. If this girl is lying about this assault that happened at the hands of a Black man, then I guess I'll just have to hold this L. And in the future, I'm going to need all the proof. I'm going to need footage. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need that before I believe, you know, any woman who is the, you know, the victim of a crime. And I, I feel like that's a point, right? I feel like it's, I feel like it's not before I believe any woman, I feel like it's before I leave anyone. Like if you want all the facts, you need all the facts. But you got some women out here literally holding L's, preparing to hold L's because they see the way that things are unfolding, that they're probably on the wrong side of this situation, which is why I'm not mad at myself for not prematurely speaking out about this situation. Because my first instinct to speak out about this situation was 
something's off about this girl. But I don't want to say that to discredit her based on some abuse that she may have faced. I didn't have the proof. However, the proof is here. Hey, I see we have our caller in the back. For the people who just got in here, please make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit on that like, okay? Tap on that like. It's a sticky button, okay? Your finger might get stuck, but just hit on it. If you're late getting here, let me show you why, right? We need to take a second before we just believe what this girl says. There was a time in 2020 where she went to the club with a friend of hers at that time. Her and the friend got separated somehow and the friend was trying to get back into the club. The friend couldn't get back into the club and something happened and this brick faced girl got beat up by a girl or some women. It could have been one or plural. So she got beat up by a woman or some woman. And she then proceeded to go online and say, a, a black man did this to me. A black man and I'm a woman. Why y'all do this? He was a six foot tall. So she's literally had issues with women and, and created issues and got beat up by women or a woman. And then decided she wanted to go online and race bait and race bait and claim that it was a black man. That is dangerous. That is harmful. I feel that she is a predator. I feel that she weaponizes and it's been proven that she weaponizes race. She weaponizes religion because the day after that situation, she had on her hijab and after she got done twerking and calling everybody niggas and shit and she had on her hijab. I'm just a poor Muslim woman. That the, So she recognizes ways. She, you know, race, she recognizes, um, weaponizes religion. Now she's a part of the LGBT community, although she was strictly dickly before. Now she weaponizes the LGBT community. The fact that she's done this exact thing and said, look at my face, a man did this to me. And it sounds like the same video is creepy. It's creepy. So share this video with whoever it is that you need to share videos with, okay? Hit thumbs up, support the stream in whatever way you can. You can send a cash app. The cash app is right here on the screen, dollar sign T-H-A, plainest Jane. Make sure you're spelling it out right. T-H-A, plainest Jane, you can send a cash app or you could just hit thumbs up on the video or share it, okay? They just started being me up to me. You grew up and they mad because you trying to fucking be somebody. They mad because you trying to be somebody. I'm trying to be a doctor and they mad. Look what they did to me. Look what they did to me for no reason. They gonna beat me up. I'm 30 years old, they gonna beat me up. Grown ass niggas try to beat me up. Grown ass niggas try to beat me up for no reason. Look at me. I'm not a bad person. Y'all know that. Y'all know I'm a good person. And they try to do this to me. Guess what? It's up and down for a real nigga. But you gonna be your pussy all your life, nigga. All your life, you gonna be your pussy. All your life, you gonna be your pussy. And I'm popping myself because I'm a gay ass bitch. What's up? It's up and down for a real nigga. But you gonna be a loser all your life, nigga. Trying to beat up a woman for fucking leaving and doing something with your life. When your ass is fucking a loser all your life, nigga. You can't beat me up. You can't. I'm good. They gave me a real good shine of them. Grown ass niggas. Over fucking six feet tall. Losers. Loser ass niggas. Up and down for a real nigga. But you gonna be a loser all your life, nigga. They try to hey, roll us on your wrist playing giant.
This man just hit me in my face with a brick and all these black men just watch and they don't give a From two different years, don't these sound like the same exact videos? Listen to this. Listen to this. Don't they sound like the exact same videos? Which and I ain't even got into showing y'all any of the GoFundMe mess. Don't these sound like the exact same videos? Look at what you. This man just hit me in my face with a brick, and all these black men just watch, and they don't give a. Yeah, this man, this man hit me. Grabbed a rock and it hit me in my face. Cause I would have given. They just try to beat me up. To me, you grew up, and they mad because you trying to fucking be somebody. They mad because you trying to be somebody. I'm trying to be a doctor, and they mad. Look what they did to me. Look what they did to me for no reason. They don't beat me up. I'm 30 years old. They gonna beat me up. Grown ass niggas try to beat me up. Grown ass niggas try to beat me up for no reason. Look at me. I'm not a bad person. Y'all know that. Y'all know I'm a good person. And they try to do this to me. Guess what? It's up and down for a real nigga. But you gonna be a pussy all your life, nigga. Her voice is, I, I just, her. Her voice, okay, all right. Ooh, stay positive, okay, I will, I will. No, I had to throw the shade. I'm shady boo. All right, we've got a caller. We are gonna get into our caller. Shout out to the callers who call into the show. You do not have to agree with me in order to call in. You don't have to share my viewpoint. The phone lines are always open to any and everyone. Okay, so let's get into our caller. Drop some pancakes in the chat and let's get into our caller for today. The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. All right, shout out to Save. What are your thoughts? You're live on the air. How do you feel about I hate to say brick face girl, but I guess I could brick brick gate. I don't know. How do you feel about the situation? Well, I am new to your channel. Sorry about my voice. Um, and I really like your strength and how you speak out and you don't try to sugarcoat anything. I'm an advocate for victims of domestic violence. I'm also um, a survivor protected under VAWA, Violence Against the Women Act. Um, I wanted to give some safety tips because when you were saying that you have to give your number out in order to not have the blowback, um, that's very unsafe. There is also a way that you can give a number out, but it's not connected. No one can do a... Um, they can use your number to find your address, okay? So what you can do, there is a thing called, um, it's a Google number, it's called TextNow, which is a free number that you can get. You can pick out your own area code. So if you meet a man that's kind of aggressive, tell him you're, you know, you're in town uh, visiting, a, you know, visiting for a conference or something like that. You just wanted to get out for a little while, but you can give them this Google number that has an out of state number. You can get one for Florida, New York, Atlanta, um, California, anywhere in the States. Okay. Then you can also um, obtain, it's called a virtual address, which is an address um, that is virtual, but also one that you can get at a post office. That's like a physical address, but it's not your home address. Does that make sense? Like a like a virtual address, right? 
there's a virtual address, one that, um, but I, I wouldn't do this because they can show you what mail that you're getting. There's an also, there's also another address that you can obtain from the post office. It's like a street address. It's not a PO box. It's like a street address, but they obtain your mail and you can go and get it, but it's not connected to you. You understand what I'm saying? It's not connected to your phone number, your actual phone number. You're giving the guy your Google number that's not attached to anything, okay? But it comes through your phone just like your number. And you can let them know that you're out of town, you know, and you just wanted to kick it for a few hours, take a break from this meeting, okay? Pick out a phony company or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Or just say that it's it's a new startup company. Also, if you're a victim of crime or a man, whether a man or woman, because I'm hoping to open a shelter for men who are victims of domestic violence and women with sons, teenage sons, because they don't have the same, um, not protection, but they don't have the same support. Like women with sons who are teenagers, um, they can't go to shelters. There's no shelters for them that I'm aware of, okay? So I'm hoping to start a shelter or open up a shelter that's specifically for women with teenage sons and men because I've only heard of two uh, shelters for men there might be more, but it's very limited. So mine, these are the two um, gender-based um, uh, shelters I want to um, open. But I wanted to share that with you because there are also steps that you can take. Um, if you are um, a victim of uh, crime where your license uh, could be blocked, uh, the police cannot um, have your actual address Judges cannot have your actual address. Only a particular governmental agency um, can have your actual address. They could forward your mail to you. So everyone will have to use that and they would have to abide by that. Any government agency out there or any agency will have to abide by it. It's, a, it's the actual law. I didn't know. So is this like an app that people can download or what? For the text now? Yeah. Yes. Text now is something you can just type in text now. T-E-X-T-N-O-W. And it's actually an app. It's free. And you can choose. They'll ask you what area code you would like your number in. And then they'll give you like different numbers to choose from. Now your friends and family could use the actual number that you have, but the people that you're giving your like for business or people that you don't want to have your actual phone number, they can use the text now number, but make sure that it is out of town number. Okay. Or out of state number. And that way, when you share it with someone that you may, you know, that may be aggressive or something like that, just tell them, you know, you're just in town for a few or whatever. And, you know, with the business conference or just anything you would like to say, don't say I'm visiting a friend or visiting a family member. Because you're putting someone else in jeopardy. OK, or, you know, they know that you are attached to the city. OK, so. Let me explain what this is about because I can see that the chat is completely confused and they feel like you're like an ad or an advertisement. And child, you ain't gave me no money. And I don't feel I don't feel that I deserve any money from you. But what we're talking about is the how women feel obligated, how fucked up society. We're we're in such a fucked up society that women are saying, just give your number out to the man. And let them call or text you. Matter of fact, what I do is I, I if, if I predict or whatever, I'm I'm gonna give my number out and I'll be like, yeah, t text me right now while we stand here so I can lock it in. Right, I'm, right. I'm lying to these niggas' face so I can lock you in. Like, t text me now so I can lock you in or call me now so that I can block them. And some, you know, women feel like that's 
It's a bit much. It's but what I'm saying what is, is, saying is that even giving these niggas your number, they can still look up your personal information. Right, so right. They can actually me, find your address. They can find right. where you so, are. So. Yeah. So what she's doing is she's providing also. Some people have been saying use Google Voice or whatever case. Yes. Yeah. It, you know, I'm it's sorry. just an option. Every woman. Yeah, is I'm sorry. Women. I didn't mean to say a specific company. Any any online phone number. I'm I'm I apologize. Any online phone number you can use. I'm I'm not. I don't work for anybody or whatever. So I'm I'm just just trying to give you information. Any online phone number service that you would like to use, make sure they have an out of state phone number, okay, that you can use for anyone that you don't feel comfortable giving your actual phone number because they can use reverse lookup or people find to look up your phone number. Right. Okay. That, yeah, that's true. Let me address this comment. Somebody says, what, a, what happened to just fuck out my face? What happened okay. to the niggas fuck out my face is these niggas cannot handle a bruised ego anymore. I was just talking right. to my mom about this. And I was telling her about the things that I used to do used to do 10 years ago. I'm like, I mean, if, a, if, if I told a nigga no and he stayed hovering around me while I'm in a bar and then I finally say, man, get your goofy ass on my face. You got them high waters on and I start clowning them. Niggas nowadays cannot handle having that ego. Bro. So yeah, you can tell a nigga in 2023 to get the fuck up out your face, but you've got to wonder if he has enough self-control to realize she just dissed me. Uh, can I say something? That he doesn't physically harm you. Can like, I say something to that? He realizes you saying that to him. And while you should be able to say, please get out my face. I'm not interested. Some of these men cannot handle rejection. And that is one of the major points of this dialogue is some of these men cannot handle being told, no, you might tell them nicely. You look up seven minutes later, you're still pleading with the same nigga to leave you to fuck alone because you're not interested. Then you might resort to a couple of insults, but even so seven to 11 to 13 minutes later, you might insult him just like we found the guy who was lying about, um, you know, being present, talking about that woman wasn't as innocent as she seemed. She was belittling the man. And I'm like, first of all, it was proven that he wasn't there. However, comma, there have been times where niggas haven't left me alone. And I've been like, I'm not interested. No, you can leave me alone. And 11 minutes later, now I am telling jokes about how you look. If a, another nigga or another quote unquote fake ass witness comes walking past talking about, I just heard her clowning his clothes. I'm hoping that me clowning his clothes will get him away from me. If you don't get out of my face with them hot waters, I already told you no 15 minutes ago. So the whole, she was belittling him. She's not as innocent as, she, even though it was bullshit because he was lying for a nigga to be like, she was belittling him. Did she pick up a brick and hit him with it? Because even it, whether she was clowning him because he kept bothering her or she was clowning him because it was just for sport for her. Did it really warrant that? No. Should Can I speak on that? Man, should any man hit a woman with a brick in the face unless she was welding a brick at him or pointing a weapon at him? Something like a G-U-N? Absolutely not. But I don't like these tail end of the discussions of she's not as innocent. She was be because sometimes we result to be literally because the nigga won't leave us. In it's like, oh, he's not getting this nice shit. It's been 11 minutes and I'm just trying to enjoy my wine and my happy hour shrimp. And you're still fucking bothering me. And I said, no, now I need to joke on you to get you away from me. So like, sis, can I say are? something to that? Can I say something to that? If you can, we are trying to de-escalate the situation because we don't know if we're dealing with someone who's actually abusive, like the woman that was in the uh, place trying to get her food and her son ended up having to take out the man. Okay. Right. Right. Today's world, we are dealing with a lot of issues. You could say, 
I appreciate your attention, but I really am dealing with something right now. And I'm just out here just trying to, you know, regroup, you know, and maybe at another time. But right now, I really need this time to myself. That's giving to him the same message, but it's not it's not attacking his ego. And I'm not here to I'm speaking on safety plans because that's my that's my forte is to deal with how to get you home safely, how when you can enjoy yourself out, but get you home safely. As I would tell men dealing in a domestic violence situation, she can say she can because I was in a um, I was taking first us uh, to become an advocate for women of uh, sexual assault. Pre persons of sexual assault. But when that advocate stated that if the victim, and I'm putting it in her words, if the victim um, tells you that she lied, you cannot go to his, the uh, guy's uh, defense attorney. You cannot go to the courts. You cannot do anything. What I say is that person is no longer a victim if they stated that they lied. So when you people say believe all victims, yes, believe all victims, but do not believe everybody. There's a difference. A person who is lying, because I have three sons, a person who is lying is not a victim. They are a victimizer. So to believe all victims, these are the people that something actually happened to. Okay, I'm the person... I am the person that went to court against my ex pro se. I had to defend myself in order to get my child. And I won with God's help, full legal and physical custody with no visitations. Do you understand me? I was going against the judge and his attorney and the, uh, um, guardian of litem that they set over my daughter. You understand? So when I tell you I came out of that court with full custody, both legal and physical, and most advocates that I've spoke to, every one of them have stated they've never heard of that. They've never heard of that. So when I'm telling you something, it is to get you home, okay? It is not for you to show how bad you are, that you're about it, about it. Because I was always, they used to call me Muhammad Ali, okay, back in the day. I'm no longer a fighter of fists. I am a fighter of people and advocacy. I use my brain. I study the law. Although, you know, attorneys have told me I need to go to law school to become an attorney. But with God's help, I've been able to be able to advocate. So when I'm talking to you, I'm not talking about how we can show our bravado. I'm trying to get you home. You don't have to talk to this man. You don't have to talk to anyone, but you need to get home. This is the respect that people want. They will give their life for respect. Have self-respect. That person doesn't know you, so they don't owe you respect. But you owe yourself respect and you owe yourself value to get home, to love yourself enough to get, make it home. So that's what I'm talking about. Now, if anybody else wants to go and confront a grown man like they can fight him, then that's their business. I'm trying to get us home. And if my, I have a, um, a channel that I'm going to give to you because I'm going to be speaking on this subject as an advocate and help people to understand because it does hurt us to have women claim like in the Me Too movement. And I spoke out about that. Those white women in Hollywood were not going for advocacy or hurt because of this. They were going for the bag. Not saying that you can't sue your abuser. What I'm saying is their point was gaining power in Hollywood and going for the bag. The real advocate fighting for women was Miss Burke, Gerana Burke. I hope I'm saying her name right. She was the one that a black woman helping victims. So when you say 
victims of domestic uh, um, victims, you know, don't be don't believe all victims or we should believe all victims. I'm saying, yes, believe all victims, but not believe everybody. That's a different point. And I want you to understand those things will help you to get home. There are some other things, government programs you you can obtain to keep yourself safe. Keep your, I, not identity, your identity, but your whereabouts safe. That's the thing you have to worry about. Even your license plates could be put in a, a system to where they do are not attached to your address. Did you know that? No, but it, it does speak to the reason why I'm so... You know, if a guy asks for my number and my situational awareness is telling me this can be dangerous if you tell him no. Yes. You know, and it's based yes. on your situational awareness. Sometimes yes. you might feel confident to tell a certain guy in a certain environment, in a certain area, you might feel confident to tell that guy no, and you might be okay. But other situations, you might not necessarily feel as comfortable. And I'm not just concerned about the initial reaction i'm concerned about me going to my car if he's gonna fight right. to my car if i'm right get my keys out in time if he tells me until i get home and if i can get my keys out enough to get into my own house but oh shit, he knows where i live now i just don't want to piss this random naker off i don't know if i'm a can of paint right be capable of anything and one thing about it is niggas be remembering how you look when you tell them no or or uh, uh, can i say something to that as well how you look like i wear different i wear different wigs to the point that and i'm in a um religious organization in fact i have to get up in a few hours to go into my ministry but do you know they didn't recognize me i wear different wigs you, you know what I'm saying? And it's not always good to go to the same club or go to the same places so regularly that people, anonymous people that you don't know that's checking you out could recognize you. But what I'm saying is the way I present myself, because I had to learn to do this to avoid my abuser, to avoid people that he could send for me. You see what I'm saying? So those are these are steps, and I hope to get more in depth on my page with that because I want people, women, to understand you can do things that are proactive in a man's world. You can do things to set, set, keep yourself safe. We have to use our brains. There's no more fighting. We're, no, we're intelligent beings. So we have to show our intelligence in this world because we have to go through these landmines, whether we like it or not. We have to go through the things that people think that they can do things against you and you shouldn't react to it or you should react in the way they want you to. So when a man gets asks for your number, some men feel like you should give it to them. But what I've learned is let them know and you're not giving up yourself and your self-respect. I I'm really I appreciate, you know, your attention. But please, I'm dealing with something right now. And I just came out here just to have some time to myself. Okay? That, that's simple. And if he continues to be aggressive, because there's some men that are just aggressive. It's nothing we can do about that, but try to get home and protect ourselves. If you, it shouldn't have, you shouldn't have to leave. No, you shouldn't have to give him these cornball answers. We're just like black people when they're driving, um, sis, they shouldn't have to over comply. OK. Almost Sambo ish. You can say things to the police officer in a respectful manner that you're home to get you home. You don't have to shuck and jab to these men who can't who have fragile egos, but you can tell them, be respectful of them and respectful of yourself. I mean, yeah, That's no, you don't, you don't have to shuck and jive. No, no. I'm, not telling, I'm not telling anybody to shuck and jive. What I'm saying is... No, I'm not saying you did this. No, I'm just saying no, people think you, if you if you don't tell them to F off, that. that's what you're doing. 
Right. I'm I'm even looking at a few of the comments. It's not that anybody has to shuck and jive. The fact of the matter is you have a responsibility to stay alive to the people that give a fuck about you. Whether you're a father, exactly. you're a mother, you're a cousin, you're exactly. a this. And if you go down dying talking about what you shouldn't have done, your people are still living with a deficit there. Right. And so, no, we shouldn't have to give our number to random men, but do we have to do all this extra shit? Because this what whether it's what you're saying, which is the, the app that you're talking about, or whether it's Google Voice, or whether it's giving them our real number and blocking them, whatever it is, we know the, the, the choice that triggers them the most is not giving them any play off top. So we have to pretend to give them play in order to stay alive. That's the point. Like, no, should we have to? No, no. And that's not about that, that. That's not trying to stay alive is not tap dancing. It's not. I shouldn't have to can give a nigga. Can I say number. something to you? I have to, but no, hold on. Let me finish. I shouldn't okay. have to shuck and job and give my phone number. I shouldn't have to shuck and job and make a Google voice number. I shouldn't have to shuck and job and make a text now. But if that is what is going to send me home alive that evening then that was the right move for me and my family for the people who need me now me talking about it when it happens is something that may you know help and assist and and, and advance the dialogue somehow and 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 help us all to brainstorm as black women because there are 95% of black women are literally spewing this same advice. I'm not even, before I even heard anybody saying it online when this story first came across me, I was, I was like, hey, look, sometimes you just got to give your number out and then block the nigga once it, whatever, because you got to get home alive. Is it, is, is it the, it doesn't feel right as advice given from us, but it feels like the advice that might send you home alive. A lot. Now, what happens is we're having a larger conversation about how all of us are having to succumb to this. So now what? What's the bigger solution? Because standing out there and saying, I shouldn't have to give you my number in order to be. And then here you go getting bust upside the head because, you know, his ego is fragile. And these niggas, not even just these niggas. Every, Nick, people are unhinged nowadays. It's 2023. The shit that you used to be able to say to random people's face in 2013 and the shit that you can say to people's face in 2023 are two totally different things. You used to be able to say and confront people about anything a decade ago. Anything. You, you were able to say that. But this, 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 this decade, this generation, this age, this era, you cannot do that. So what do we do? We continue to talk about it. We continue to survive when we come face to face with what we perceive to be danger, which may be, you know, a guy asking for a number where we, we, we fear bruising his ego and therefore we may give away that phone number or that google number or that text now or or whatever but we we gonna go back online and talk about you know what i i was pressured i had to give out this fake number today and and, and the continuous brainstorming the conversation hopefully leads to a conversation that is solution oriented or somebody that has an idea that's like Okay, well, we may not die if we do this. But for now, we don't know how to stay alive and stay unhurt and, and unassaulted when a nigga asks for our number and we're just flat out not fucking interested. So our solution to stay alive is to give them whatever number, whether it's Google, the real, the, 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 we're going to give them something and then we're going to block it. When we get it to stay safe, we need a better solution. Yes. But I think that keeping the conversation alive is something that might assist and being solution oriented moving forward. What else are we going to do? Uh, stand out there and get beat upside the head. I don't have to give you my number. No, you don't deserve. But clink, clink, clink. Like what? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know what I mean? 
So sometimes when you got to survive, people be acting like hood tactics isn't, you know, like aren't a thing when it comes to the way in which you need to survive. The way in which you need to survive is not no textbook. And this is, this is what you, it's not, a, it's, there ain't no textbook to survive. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like us talking about it is way more than enough. And if there's some, some woman, some person or, or, or whatever that has a better solution, then cool. Bring it up. If not, we're just out here encouraging other women on how to stay alive. Because if we sit here and we be like, you don't have to give these niggas your number. And we're imploring women to do this. Women are out here putting themselves in harm's way because they in a nigga in an incel's ass face talking about, I ain't gotta give you my number. And now they're getting clocked upside the head, their the, the body being found next week. Or whatever the case is, it's it's crazy. Is it fair? No. No, it's not fair. And no, it's not right. But we talk about life or death. We're not talking about, oh, just tolerating disrespect or letting somebody talk to you any type of way. No, we're talking about life or death. So therefore, it is important to talk about how each and every one of us survive, I think. that's important what are your thoughts on that well i wanted to say one thing we're not giving don't give a man a feeling that you are interested in him that's something that could backfire even though you're trying to get away even though you just want him out your face to, to let him know that you, this is your time that you need for yourself. If you give him a, a, a number, do not uh, let it be your real number at any point because he could reverse Google you and find your number. I'm letting you know. Make sure if you are going to your car, if you don't have any form of non-lethal, you know, uh, thing like mace, take your keys put them, you, most of us have more than one key. Take your keys and place them in between your fingers as you are going to your car with your main key near your thumb, okay? So that if anyone, and, and when if, if you just jab yourself a little bit, your keys hurt. Think about you punching someone or you scratching them with it, okay? And trying to go for vulnerable parts of their faces or whatever but we're not telling you to show these men that you are interested in them at any point if you give the number you know let them know if you have anything like business wise maybe that you do you know i can refer your i can network and refer your information to someone else so it's like a hookup to something else okay it's not a hookup to you we don't want to show the people because it could backfire. They could say, well, oh, she seemed interested at the beginning and now she's trying to play me. That's You're dealing with people that are aggressive and have fragile ego. So if you are sitting here rejecting them in the beginning or playing them, they're going to feel like they've been played and it causes or increases the anger and feeling of, Oh, she rejected me. Oh, and now she wants to play me. She thinks I'm a sucker. You see what I'm saying? I have to deal with people in my ministry, like a guy yesterday that was trying to, um, he was trying to come on to me as I was trying to talk to him about scriptures. What I said is, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not married. You know, I'm looking for my Boaz with a pasta Paul flavor, you know, made it a joke, you know. So I have to deal with this because I'm in touch with people. Like I said, I'm about to go get ready to go into my ministry in a few hours. I have to deal with people, men, on a day-to-day -day basis who attempt to try to come on to me. So I've learned to navigate it without being, because I love my black men, okay? I want to make sure I have sons, so I wouldn't want anyone disrespecting them. But also, I'm here to just try to give reasons as to how to get home that's all i'm saying so the other nuances on you know don't make a man feel that you are interested in him and you're not because it will backfire 
think of other ways and even practice them so they're more realistic. You, you know what I'm saying? Am I disconnected from you? I don't know if I'm disconnected. No, you're still here. Okay. Well, I have to get, I have to, um, like I it's said, okay. I'm, I just want you all to be safe out there, sis. And if there's anywhere I can give you my number, that's for, I mean, my, my information, my contact information, uh, my YouTube page is not this, but I don't want to just blast it on your show, but it's not this, um, YouTube page. This is just my personal YouTube page. I was trying to get in with my, my advocacy page, but okay. if, yeah, you can definitely message me on Instagram. The only thing I wanted to say in, in 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 reference to that is that can become subjective. Like, oh, don't don't because I feel like to summarize what you said is don't lead them on, don't lead them on. Right. But sometimes being courteous and just entertaining them, they can take it as that. So finding that line can right. be difficult when you're right. trying to some people when they're not trying to hurt people's feelings they're overly courteous or they you know it's they they you know act or perform in a certain way that the other party is taking as oh well you let me on i thought you liked me and all i really did was smile every time you said something or i gave you a courteous response no thank mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. or this or that or it, what accepted a drink from across the restaurant or something like that so sometimes it's like when you get into well not you in particular but people like don't lead them on it's like when they want to take certain things as an mm -hmm. advance you know mm -hmm. they well so the subjective nature of you're right not leading them on that can that, it, it's very much a gray area mm -hmm. it, it, mm -hmm. it, Objective to what you know, how people are perceiving somebody just being courteous and being like, "Okay, thank you," or "You're very <laughs> cute." Okay, thank you, or you know, smile or thank you. You look cute too. Like, hey, if, if anybody calls me cute or says, "Hey, I like your hair," or whatever, I'm automatically mm -hmm. gonna return to come. I'm gonna find something. Oh, 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 mm -hmm. well, I like oh, well, I like your hair. Oh, well, I like it, you know, and people and, and, and not to play semantics and go back and forth because it sounds like I'm being petty, but on some real stuff, some people take it that way. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you know, based on you just kind of smiling and receiving their energy. So, mm -hmm. you know, finding that great area. I would love to have more conversations with you because it does sound like you're very knowledgeable with what you're saying although we don't agree 100 percent on everything i do still feel like what you have to say is very um very important i appreciate um, that thank you i appreciate yeah. that you i'm laughing because you sound like my daughter she's like mommy quit talking to everybody i just feel i'm i'm from the south and we're more sociable but i because of the fact that i had to pacify someone who has almost a hundred years Okay, supervised probation, but only did four months, only did a few months, assaulted a cop, did no time while the cop was trying to help his then girlfriend who he was abusing. So when I tell you I'm 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 beyond the um, uh, he's aggressive at a bar, I had to live with someone who not only could have deleted me but could have had someone else delete me okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this is these are the steps as in i went and took my power back by, by becoming an advocate so i've spoken to my point is i wanted to speak to agencies um who have to process the confidential information of those protected under vawa men also can be protected no matter what your gender or sexuality um um, is you can be protected under the uh, 
Violence Against Women Act. So wow. I am hoping to speak before um, some people that actually make uh, legislations in order to make them even stronger in protecting victims because there are a lot of things I had to learn do my due to my being a survivor. Okay, agencies that are out there that actually protect those who are victimized to help these victims. When I open my shelter, it's going to be more. It's not going to be just giving you confidential addresses. It's going to be how can you maneuver through these landmines of dealing with different agencies that you are processing your job and keeping yourself safe when you go to work. So you, you see what I'm saying? So it's a lot of different things. But when I tell you I live with someone that could have not only taken me out and probably got away with it, but could have gotten other people to do the same. Yeah. And I'm still here. And this person, I said, wow, you look like you have demons, you know, and got me up against the wall and told me, didn't I tell you that Satan was my best friend? I so, so do you understand where I'm coming from now? <laughs> I, I, I understand where you're coming from. And to be completely honest, I've been there too. I've been Beautiful. There. Beautiful. Like, We're going to get along. I, We're going to get along. <laughs> like, I mean, like the whole, and I've sometimes it's embarrassing to even, you know, uh, you know, to talk about it or even reference the fact that I allowed someone to move in with me who did that to me. Like it's my name on the lease. You're like, right. and then when I'm done with the abuse, you're like, right. oh, you just gonna make me homeless. You gonna make me sleep outside. Well, you're beating my ass every day. Like how, uh, how, why do you expect that I am going to just let you look? Oh, so you gonna make me homeless. Like, no, I'm, I'm putting my foot down on the abuse. Like, that's it. Oh, so I'm that's just saying, I'm, this is a man that's nine, almost 10 years older than me. So when mm -hmm. I tell you I've, I've been there, I've mm -hmm. absolutely been there. However, I do. That's why I want us to life. take our power back, sis. And that's why I became an advocate. I walked, I walked to um, the advocacy, right? I walked there in pain, even when I could barely walk to receive my training, okay? I was betrayed by a person who was a, I'm on 1%, so I'm about to go. But I had things with other advocates that was atrocious. So we have to, like I said, I've learned to maneuver through this system. And I'm going to get your, is your Instagram page the same number name as this? Yeah, the same as this. This okay, I'm really going to leave you my contact information, okay? Um, because the things I speak of is I, what I lived. And I'm trying to give the knowledge to agencies so that they can know how to process and have, you know, con they can process confidential information, know how to handle um, the privacy of someone who, ha who is a survivor and how we can survive in things as you're talking about this situation. But I wanted to address it in a way because this woman through her antics and her agenda has hurt actual victims. So I want to be able to address that because I want people who are looking at this and don't want to support us I want them to understand there is a difference between a victim and someone claiming to be. And I need for people to understand that because judges look at things like this. Attorneys who are supposed to be representing us, especially as black women, look at us differently than they look at someone else. OK, so as a black woman advocate, I'm telling you, we are treated differently as survivors and victims than anyone else. That's my purpose yeah. is to educate not only us and give my people a safe space as victims and survivors, but also to speak to those um, of, um, who create legislations to protect us and agencies who come in contact with us. Yeah. Yeah. 
but thank you. I, I just wanted to tell you I'm new to your that's why I didn't know how to get on it. And, you know, and my, my children are not here to be able to help me to know how, whatever buttons I need to push. But well, I want you to know that I really appreciate your strength and how you're not giving a, um, you're unapologetically black and a woman. And you don't play those two down. And that's why I began, you know, su you know, following your page. Thank you. I do appreciate that. I, I am unapologetic in what I have to say and think about this woman because yeah. we feel like it's a disservice to black women. Yes. She is um, assimilating a bit into our community because her own community has exiled her ass because she's problematic as hell. Um, That's what I speak on as well. Although as a, as a Christian, I believe in, you know, unifying everyone coming together, but you have to, I'm, I'm black. Okay. I'm African American. I'm a foundational black American woman and I don't play about my people. And I am tired of the attempt or the agenda to push the stereotypical racist ideology about my people. I have three sons and I do not want them or a woman like her to be able to. That's why I um, was never a um, sexual assault advocate, because no one was going to tell me that if I know that that person is lying, I am not to speak before the judge. I am not to tell the defense attorney. I can say nothing, not even to the police. It says advocate. I am a victim's advocate. I'm not a person perpetrating. That's why I don't, I'm not an advocate or a person that trains or helps um, uh, counsels uh, abusers. I'm not, I know their, I know their manipulation. So I'm not going to sit there and listen to it. You understand what I'm saying? As they're receiving, there's a domestic violence uh, train, um, therapy that they need to go to instead of anger management. That's all a, also another area, but I won't get into that. I'll just leave you my, my information in, in your Instagram. And I just hope, you know, that we can contact, I linked it up with another, um, uh, YouTuber that showed me the steps that I can take in order to create these shelters. So when I network, when I try to get in, it's a genuine networking. It's not just to, you know, get something from you. It's I'm hoping to build that village to help us. You know what I'm saying? Ultimately, I know Almighty God and his son are going to be the ones to end everything. But I know that it's my job to help my people as well. Okay? I appreciate you. I do appreciate you coming on. Um, I look forward to seeing you in future streams. Hopefully you subscribe. And um, I'll see you in the comments. I, oh, I've su subscribed already. You know, I don't have a lot of money, but whatever money I have, I'm going to give it to good causes. And I believe that yours is a good cause. But I just wanted to let you know right now I'm fighting a case against an agency and I'm doing it pro se. So all of my money is, is going against that agency who violated VAWA and violated my rights. So when I tell you I don't play with people... <laughs> It's a big agency that I'm 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 going to and I have like 30 days to answer this brief. You know, we're on the last leg. So I just want to let you know I've spent like hundreds of dollars on this case myself and I'm fighting pro se. But my advocacy does not stop with just individuals. I'm going against this agency that actually violated my rights as a um, person protected under VAWA. Wow. Yeah, I don't play. <laughs> I figure if I stood up against somebody who who who, who is, is um is Satan's friend, I know I can stand up to anyone with God's help. He's been helping me all the way through, so I can't take the credit. But I, I'm stubborn. I am stubborn, and I don't I don't like bullies. I don't like bullies. If you stand on it, you stand on it. I'm gonna stand on it. But thank you for allowing me. I, I'm I apologize if you know if you're um followers, you know, I went off the rail or whatever, but I, I just had to um, stay up and I had to be able to speak to you because my, my thing is just get home. Respect, have self-respect. This guy don't know you. He don't need to respect you. He should, but he don't need to for you to respect yourself and get home safe. 
I know that's right. At, at the end, of the, that, that's my main thing. Get home safe. Even if you got to lie to the nigga. Whatever you got to do. Get home safe. But don't to say to get home. Yeah. Just get home. Preach your rights at, at place, time, find a show to call into, make your mm-hmm. home mm-hmm. Home. do your own, you know, get home safe. But no, I do. I, uh, I appreciate you calling in. Thank you so no, much. No, thank you for having a platform for me able to be able to, you know, share this information. But I'm going to go now and leave my information with you. Okay. okay. On your Instagram. Thank you so much, ma- um, ma'am. No problem. Okay. I know you're not older than me. It's just a Southern thing of respect. (laughs) I'm actually older than you. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, all right. All right. Oh my God. All right. So all right, y'all. So get into this black owned business, Stickies. It's got things for inside your home, outside your home, and even on the go. JasmineMadeIt.com is your new destination for black girl magic mugs, tumblers, and even wine glasses. You can even customize the tumblers and wine glasses. There's a lot going on for a low price over at JasmineMadeIt.com. And if you've been serious about wanting to support more black owned businesses, here's your chance. Let JasmineMadeIt.com handle all your problems for family and friends. You ever had a friend over and they just wasn't catching the hint or paying the rent? Y'all asses all get the stepping. <laughs> yeah, tell them to get the stepping with this nostalgic Martin themed doormat and shop over a dozen different doormat designs over on jasminemaida.com. All right, stickies, you know what time it is. It's time to put your money where your mouth is and shop black today. Make life easier for you and your household by taking your family's hot or cold beverages on the go with one of these unique tumblers. It's insulated to keep your beverage at temperature and it comes with a few different reusable straws and even the specific brush that you need to wash it so you can keep it sanitized and germ free. They've got all kinds of designs to match your mood or style. So grab something for your wife, the hubby, or even the kids over on jasminemadeit.com. That's jasminemadeit.com, and I'll see you over there. All right, so we got another caller back here. Let's get into our other caller. Thank you all so much for hitting like and thumbs up on the video. If you haven't already done so, um, I really do hope that you ingest some of the pink sauce. Um, so that you can get sick. I really hope that you get sick. Um, and you have some of the pink sauce. So- you know the pink sauce is made in the kitchen. It's a different color every time. Like, if you haven't hit thumbs up, you're a little sick. Actually, you you know what? You're a lot of bit sick. This is a sick Negro. You know, so just hit thumbs up. We got another caller calling in. We are still talking brick to the face, girl. Um, I think that this conversation is, uh, I think it opens up a lot of discussions, whether you agree or disagree or believe or don't believe her, (gasps) excuse me, whether you agree or don't agree with her, um, this dialogue, this, this, this discourse, um, I find to be really interesting. I find to be really interesting. So, uh, we've got another caller backstage. Again, if you want to call in, let me know. Put a 9-9 in the chat. 
Um, if you are looking to call in and you have no clue how to be a part of the conversation and you do want to be a, a part of the conversation and you don't have to agree with me or the chat or anybody else in order to be a part of the conversation, put the 99, drop some pancakes down below to welcome our caller in and let's keep the show going. The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. All right, so Dominique, you're live on the air. Thank you so much for calling in and being a part of the conversation. Thank you, thank you. Good morning to you too. No problem. What are your thoughts about this conversation and this whole, um, this entire brick-faced situation? What are your thoughts? Um, well, as far as the young lady, I'm disappointed that she used Black women's plight for, in my opinion, a selfish reason. She wanted to make clout and get views and followers. Um, and the young man that I did watch his commentary on it, I feel where he was coming from. You don't want to put yourself or your life on the line for a problematic person. Um, another thing that I had to say about her is another reason why I'm disappointed is because she's from Somalia. And I feel as though if something was to go down, she could flee back to her country. But we as black women, we're here in this country who have to live with that stereotype that people are putting on our heads every day. So it's, it's, it's a lot that goes with that. I mean, I'm not mad that she came over here to this country for a better life, but don't come here to this country for a better life and make a mockery of everything that we have fought for and have went through to get the respect as black women. You know what? You spitting facts, honestly. Like, uh, you're actually I, spitting. I have three sons and a daughter, and I wouldn't want my boys to put my put themselves out there to defend the honor of a female who is going around making videos of her slapping white folks and cussing people out randomly and lying and stealing from GoFundMe. Because at the end of the day, that puts my sons in jeopardy. Not only do they have to fear the other man, they would have to fear the replications of the brother man. Yeah, I'm, yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Um, I It's so crazy because I was watching Tanya TKO earlier today. And she was like, would you want your man or your whatever. And I was like, no. I was like, I would want my man to stand back, call the police, and or film the situation. And she thought I was being funny, but I was being serious. I was being yeah. serious because I, you know, we've seen certain situations where men have put themselves on the line for the sake of breaking up what looked to be a domestic dispute because it was a man versus a woman or vice versa or whatever the case is. And sometimes a man ends up dead and the couple makes it off great well, whether they fucking next week again or, or, or whatever the case is. She'll be waiting for him to come out of jail if he get locked up. And right. And so, you know, it's 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 bizarre to me for people. But I feel like there there is a need and a requisite. Oh, damn. That's a strong word. I can't believe I just well, I said it. There is a requisite for having the full blown footage from somebody, anybody for something that happened. You're not always in cameras view when an injustice happens to you. And if someone is claiming that there is an injustice that is taking place, imagine, right? Mm -hmm. hate, to, hate to damper the conversation and take it to something that's a bit dark. Mm -hmm. People act like there's something so wrong. with, Like imagine an 88 pound man or an 11th grader who is sitting here watching this situation, they don't have a room in this fight to actually fight. But every person that just has a penis doesn't have the room or the ability to fight or feel like they can win or feel confident. But it doesn't mean that they can't help the situation. 
right? Right. Whether it be right. calling the police or whether it be using their phone to record. And I say all that to say, what proof do we have to prove this woman right or wrong? Right. She lied about an imaginary black man in 2020. The man didn't exist. She got her ass beat by women. And then, and she, then she did it like, again now in 2023. Well, my problem right now, my problem with her is I've seen people that then got busted in the face with a brick. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland all day. So you see all okay, different stand up, period. So for me, I see where you talking about you got busting your face, but there's no blood, there's no scarring, there's no stitches, no staples, no nothing. I think she has a random disease that I know personally that family members of mine have where they could pinch their finger and their whole hand just swell up. Something happened to her, true enough. I think something did happen, but I don't think it's to the extent or the gravity that she's saying it is. My whole thing is something something may or may not have happened to her. And she may have needed to report it. But she didn't. But you got to think also, in this day and age of social media, people want the bag. They want the money. They want the clout. They want the fame. They, they want to go worldwide. They want to go viral in their city. So... That's another reason why she probably didn't make a police report if it was true. That, but th this is a part of the reason why I feel like recording is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Recording is a good thing. Imagine, first of all, think about all the different angles that we got of the Montgomery brawl. Yes, um, sir. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. We, we, we enjoyed it because we wanted all, because you know why? Because we could stand on how racist white people are. And have all of those different versions. So sometimes people be like, oh, people just stand around and record shit. You know what? Some of the recorders right, might honestly be too me. Like, like honestly, if I had a 15-year-old boy son, I wouldn't want him to jump into that. I would want him to record it instead. Because exactly. why would I want my 15-year-old getting involved in this adult situation and he don't know what's going on and, and whatever's going on? I would rather him record it from beginning to end so that whoever is telling the truth or whoever is lying, this is the full-blown truth. If they weren't in a place, all of the recordings that we got from the, Mont, uh, the Montgomery brawl, it wasn't footage from the boat. It wasn't the boat had enough footage. It was people. So, so I know people like the clown or say, oh, people just stand around and record. But sometimes the people who are recording, they understand their place in society and they understand that, you know what? I can't win this fight if I jumped in it, if I wanted to. And so sometimes having the recording play from beginning to end and, and let's just say that the, so-called accuser is lying. Let's say she was lying. Let's say somebody was recording from beginning to end, though. There exactly. was footage proving that she's a fucking liar and that maybe she did something or, you know, whatever the case is. But I'm tired of people demonizing people who stand by and record situations like this when, to be completely frank with you, um... You know, let's just say she got into an issue with a nigga who actually had a weapon. But I want my boyfriend or my fiance jumping into a fight for a bitch like her. Nope. I'm sorry. I nope. would not. I would not. Now, should he do I want him to call the police and, and, and film it from beginning to end so that whoever is or isn't at fault can be brought to. Yeah. You know, but Tanya thought that was a joke when I was you know, saying that to her. And she didn't think it was a joke, like in a way in which she was, you know, she really thought I was joking, but I was being sir because she didn't understand my viewpoint. And, my and viewpoint, I 100% agree with you because like I said, being here, being here in Maryland. It could be any random person on the subway. It could be any random person on the whatever. You know, people act like it's so wrong to stand around and just record something that's happening. But if you're not in the proximity of a camera that's going to, um, you know, that, that is actually going to capture and back up what you have said, you would hope 
that somebody recorded it. And, and my main point with this is imagine that woman who got an award, but let's take the award out of it. Imagine that woman who got the award for filming what happened to George Floyd. Mm -hmm. Imagine what would or would not have happened if nobody was recording that. They would have pulled up his past history and, oh, he had a petty shoplifting charge. Oh, he was trying to shoplift in some shit that was $16 and whatever. And, oh, he's dead now, but he was a shoplifter and it was 16 you know, they tried to use his past against him. If had nobody had been recording that shit, nobody would know what actually had fucking happened that day. So, you know, the recorders are people who don't get enough respect. And, and, and again, you can help in so many different ways. You don't have to jump in and actually be physically aggressive in order to help a woman that's you know, necessarily being whatever yet. Yeah, would it be nice if you jumped in? I mean, like, yeah, but you know, whether it's you calling the police or filming the thing from beginning to end, because again, she's lied on black men in the past. This is a woman who literally got her ass beat by women and then blamed it on black men. If people had a recording of that in the past, right? Or if people didn't, imagine if she actually filed a police report and just pointed to any men in her proximity and said, "Yeah, it was it was a, it was a man that did this to me, and really it was women that beat her ass." But she would think about yeah, it this it, way it, too. It, I'm looking at, I see was, it from your end, but I'm yeah. also looking at it like this: them and guys that were standing out there probably didn't right. record. That would be a huge problem. So that's why I don't find anything wrong with men who feel like they need. Not to say that they don't want to, but sometimes they can kind of, you know how you, when it comes to a physical fight, if you feel like I can take somebody, I can take somebody. And if you feel like I can't take up somebody, then you might kind of just be like, nah, I can't even take this person. Like, you you know, whatever, whatever a, a man's decision making process is with I can or I can't help here still, you know, call somebody, record something, record something so that somebody can get justice. And that is something that I feel like is absent in this conversation. Um, you know, uh, referring to this woman and in general. And I see where you're coming from with that, but I'm also looking at it from their perspective. They you say like that's the my <laughs> Hey, we bought them more girls all day, yeah, every day. So deep. That is crazy. <laughs> I get it from my mama. No, but um, like I was saying, they um from the guy's point and perspective, they said that she has been so problematic in that community and for those particular people, maybe they didn't want to record what was going on with her because she's probably did some other foul stuff to them people in that community. But at the same time, you got to understand this woman been hopping all over the place. She lived in New York. This happened in Texas. Them people in Texas ain't know about her. She just mm -hmm. recently went to Texas. So she be, she, she is a professional victim again. She weaponizes religion. Oh, I'm a, I'm a poor Islam. I'm a poor Muslim. Oh, I'm a poor black woman. Oh, I'm a poor like she be she be weaponizing shit. And like, see that messes it up for black women like you and I, especially with this Me Too movement stuff going on. I just had that conversation today when a friend of mine was telling me how we as parents don't like how. The schools in Baltimore have been lenient with the dress code, with the way these kids talk to each other, with the way they disrespect adults. We have no, um, the kids don't respect authority figures since we've had the Freddie Gray riots. The police really don't want to do their job. And like I told them, it's a trickle down effect. There's no repercussions for your actions. And she feels as though she didn't got away with it for so long that she's going to keep doing it until she gets prosecuted. 
Yeah. They had three GoFundMe pages in three years. That speaks volumes. $60,000. And, yes. and for GoFundMe to not catch it, that's a problem. Same woman, same name, that's a problem. She's not scared of any actions being taken against her. And then with us giving her this viral moment, she's going to take that to the head and be like, well, I can try and get away with this again. Whoever donated you know need to get their money back. That is the reason why I feel like people like her and others or uh, are predators. They're predatory. Yeah. They prey on the religious community. All you have to do Right, <laughs> cough, cough, the man Um, all you have to do for the religious community is say, God is good, God is mm -hmm. blessing. Raise your hands up, and you'll have people that show up that are like, Oh, yes, you know, he's good. People that will just flock because they're they're so programmed to the if they say God is good, then they are, are aware that God works miracles, whatever. And and the, and the, it's so easy to study a preacher in the three top um, scriptures that they give. So you've got the people <laughs> who are able to goop you based on religion, right? And it might be based on religion. And for some in this situation, it's it's the race baby thing. She's mm -hmm. very predatory when it comes to race. Again, the the after I'm baby. a black woman, I'm a black woman. Y'all black men sat there and let this black oh, woman get beat yeah, up. Right. So she's always race baiting. So anytime something happens, whether she's in the Dollar Tree, the hotel, the Airbnb, oh y'all are racist against me. Y'all are and some people are so driven towards race issues and race relations that they'll just blindly believe her instead of really doing that due diligence and really exercising a bit of critical thinking skills and analysis and whatever. And the same with religion. So she literally preys on these people. And again, her people don't fuck with her. Like mm -mm. Just so she's trying to come over here to black spaces. <laughs> For black women's causes that we're fighting for right now, <laughs> thinking that she's going to get some leeway. And black women got to stop caping for these women that ain't no good. Mm -hmm. They got to, because at the end of the day, they making our plight and our fight harder for us. Yeah. I, 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 she, she doesn't help. And especially because she's considering herself to be you a dark-skinned <laughs> black woman. Right, she's considering herself to be black. I'm a black woman, and y'all not nothing. I'm like, girl. I called Cat when I first seen the video. I'm like, where's the blood? Where's the stitches? Where's the staples? Where's the police taking a report? It doesn't, and and, and I know it totally comes off as as victim blaming to people who. Um, don't have access to the facts, but the fact that she literally got her ass beat by women in the past, and then her face was so her fa her face wasn't even that swollen, but it was swollen. Her face looked like she had an abscessed tooth. That's like, what it looked like. Yeah, her face was it was swollen some type of way that she felt whatever, and then blamed it on black men. It's like okay now. When Wait. you get hit with a brick, everything going to be spoiled. You can't see out your eyeball. You can't talk out your mouth. I didn't seen it firsthand. That good. Something it's, happened to her, but it wasn't no brick. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, it, it's just... Too, and questioning her in public kind of... It made it difficult for people who were actually... You know... People now my question, now my question for that is, being that she's been exiled from her own community, I wonder how her family is feeling about this situation. I wonder how her mother, because they are all, those type of people are overly religious. Mm. I wonder why is she so hyped to come over to the black side? Because I'm like this, y'all want to claim black women, but y'all don't want our black problems. <laughs> 
I mean, I like I said, they her her own people disowned her because of her problematic behavior. So, so I wonder why everybody keeps saying that it's mental illness, it's mental illness. Could it be that she's looking for attention from somewhere else and she's not getting it from her own people? Mm -hmm. no, I don't know where to say. I'm an over-overthinker. I sit back and I analyze everything and everybody for what it is. And that girl, she got problems, true enough. But it's a deeper situation than that. For her to keep wanting to blame something on a black man constantly, what did a black man do to her? She needs to explain that. I mean, I mean, what did they do to her? Um, you know, she's a she's a prostitute. Is it, she is. A I'm like, is it because they exist in the you world? Know, did did somebody are her while she was doing her s work? Like, right. Okay. So, did you know she's a prostitute? Uh huh. Yeah. That's why I said s work. Mm. So, mm. I'm trying to figure out what it is. Why is it that she keeps targeting black men? Black men have enough on they. I'm gonna say this: good black men have enough targets on their back. They don't need a woman from another country coming over here putting more stereotypes on them, getting more black men shot up, beat up, killed for no reason. I have a, a 16 year old son. I wouldn't want my son fighting her battles. For what? For my son to end up dead somewhere, honoring a woman that didn't honor herself? I'm not going to stay on here too long. I just wanted to give that little food for thought. People really wasn't paying attention to the fact that she was from Somalia wanting to claim black. And she constantly blaming black men for problems that she has of her own. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show her the video of her in... Um, Oh, I'm sorry. My little one woke up. Okay. I'll go ahead and I'll let you go. Um, I'll but I, en I enjoyed conversing with you. And you are a very, very pretty woman. As a matter of fact, you look like my stepdaughter's mother. She's a good woman. So I, I enjoyed your commentary. I've been watching it since you started. And I have subscribed. No problem. Thank you so much. I hope you have a good night. And I hope you have a good weekend. Oh, wedding! Well, I got a wedding to go to today, so I'm gonna have a great weekend. Five day vacation, or I'm going to get lit. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun! Mm, I'll be living through you. Send me a message on Instagram. Yes, ma'am. Thank you again. I appreciate you. No problem. You have a good morning. You too. All right. All right. So what I want to do is, and I. You know, my initial thoughts about this conversation was that this young woman's past really shouldn't take much of a place of where we land with what she claims she's been through. But again, she's been through a situation that I've showed you already through the video where she's accused black men of abusing her when really she got into an altercation with black women and it's problematic to say um to say the least okay so um i want to get into <laughs> the part where this young lady actually, um, she gets really violent, she gets really ignorant, she gets really rude. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, Tanya TKO's video to help you understand this. But yeah, she gets really like 
really indignant um, pertaining to this. I guess she just feels like she has a right to do anything, child. I, she she comes off as a very much fake walk to me. Education, special education, psychiatric medication, juvenile incarceration, emotional frustration, and premature extermination. Okay, so let's... <laughs> let's take a look. into what Tanya um, ex and be sure to follow Tanya TKO in your videos and your travels. Really good channel. Right? So there we have that, right? And so that's the statement that she wanted you all to know, right? And so that's what that's what she says, right? So let me show you something real quick that that I think is important for us to see. So now this happened in 20 Oh my gosh, this happened this year. God, this happened this year in February. I just want you all to pay attention to this, right? Someone is asking if she can't identify him, who does she sue? If the, I just, I said this, you have to be on uh, here on time. If you all need to get to the broadcast on time, go to www.tanyatko.com forward slash T-E-X-T. $1.99 a month plus fees. It turns out to be like $2.20 or something like that a month. You can get a text whenever I go live. It's $22 plus fees for the year or $4.99 a month international, or $50 for the year. And you can be here one time so that you don't have to have me repeating things over and over again. The nightclub is negligent. They fail to protect people on their property. You can't just attack somebody on the property of a nightclub or outside a nightclub or as a patron leaving the nightclub. She's protected. And so they didn't provide adequate security if this attack really happened. So they are, they are liable for her medical bills and all of that. They can't just get away with that. So listen, I wanna show you, I wanna show you this. I want to be able to have everything and nothing in my mind while I run. I need to get my legs stronger. The legs feed the wolf. You might think you know Snapchat, but do you really? Here's three things that you might not know about Snapchat ads. Did you know that nine out of 10 young people are on Snapchat? Yeah, they're on Snapchat connecting, exploring, and influencing, which leads me to number two. Snapchatters trust recommendations from friends and family four times more than influencers. And number three, with Snapchat ads, you can reach people where they share, connect, and explore, which also means you can hit your business goals with Snapchat ads. Click the link below to learn how your business can grow with Snapchat ads. right here. This happened in February of this year. This is Rhoda at a hotel. She's at a Hilton hotel and she is in a quote unquote Karen situation, right? Um, listen, go ahead and share this video, tag somebody who you feel needs to be here, or you can tag them for tomorrow, share it to your WhatsApp group, share it to, to somebody um, on Instagram, share it on Facebook. The, there are people who are not here who need some of the lessons from today's video. Remember how that person who says she went to college with her, that trouble followed her, right? I, let, me, let me read something to you. I'm going to read something to you from, from Robert Greene's book, right? All right. This is Robert Greene's book, The 48 Laws of Power, right? 
there's a section in here that talks about um staying away from the unlucky, right? Uh where is let me see. Let me Google, let me Google which chapter that is. Um 48 laws of power. 48 laws of power. Stay away from unlucky. Unlucky. Here we go. This is law number patients. And I imagine that there's a lot of a lot of the people who are watching are also chronically in certain situations, chronically finding themselves fighting people, chronically finding themselves at the tail end of 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 injustice and all types of stuff. So I want to play this video for you all. Right? This happened in February of this year. She was at a Hilton hotel. Listen to this exchange. Listen. One, I'm making a formal complaint after making a verbal complaint. Don't back up because you knocked on my door five times. Ma'am. Ma'am, you I called my phone five up. times yeah, and you right. called me five times. So have you been in my room? Have you been in my room? I'm going to let the police be heard. Have you been in my room? I'm I'm sh I am I shaking right now. I, I'm, I am shaking. Oh, you don't have to answer me. You're a manager. So yeah. I will speak then. Since you don't want to speak for yourself, then I'm going to be the narrative. I am a Hilton's member. Yeah, I am a guest here good. who have been here for, for since 10 o'clock last night. Everybody, as y'all know, I just flew in from Nigeria. This is the small hallway. I have not been out of my room. This woman told me that she walked up and down the hallway and told me that this room that I was in smells like marijuana. She has not been in my room. She has not come in my room. But she has accused me, out of all people, smoking weed, even though I've been asleep all night. So I wake up to several calls, and this woman telling me I must leave immediately. I when I told you, ma'am, come into my room, inspect yourself, there is no weed smoke in my room. You have the wrong person. Did you come in my room? No, you refused because I you chose. Have you, you chose. You don't have to. You do have to answer to no, me because I am the customer, no, and you know what you are. You're the employee, and I guess what? Well. I told her. I told her, please come and inspect the room. Stop backing up. I'm not coming towards you. You're the violent care. one. I'm you are the violent I'm one. Like, you are racist. Okay. Racism is violent. Okay. Racism is, is is violent. Being a black woman coming into this country, coming into a hotel, being accused of smoking weed or cigarettes or whatever you said, when there's a hallway, and she said, I walk down this hallway, and I think there's smoke coming out of your room. I said, please, ma'am, come into my room. I'm asleep. Come so there's, there's a lot going on here, right? There's, 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 there's a lot, there's a lot going on here, right? What is it that you're picking up on so far? Right? What is it that you're picking up on so far? So me, one of the things that I'm picking up on is it, she starts saying that this is racism, that she's violent. Ex so initially, initially I felt like this woman's past did not matter. I felt like her past did not matter. Because you can pull up anybody's past and whoever they, they might not agree with who they were three, four, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago. But should that, you know, you think about the tactics that they use when they kill innocent black men and innocent black people in general. They start pulling up and exposing their social media takes that may or may might be unpopular takes, whatever the case is. So initially, I her past, I was like, that does not move me to make a video about her and say that she's lying. Because there was a lot about her past coming out. However, <laughs> however, what came out today? Thanks to Nyla. I think her channel name is um, Grown Woman Vibes. <laughs> 
excuse me, I think that the the name of her channel was legitimately called Grown Woman Vibes. So she had a video where the woman who screen recorded the video came on where she was beat up by women, but then made up the fact that she was beat up by an imaginary black man that was hating on her. She's the one that came forward with that story. Um, that is far beyond interesting. It's far beyond interesting. Oh, this man just hit me in my face with a brick and all these black men just watch and they don't give a Yeah, this man, this man hit me, he grabbed a rock and he hit me in my face because I wouldn't give him my number. And all y'all just watch. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do y'all want y'all to do? I want y'all to be a man. I want y'all to be a man. Do something. Y'all gonna let a man hit me in my face. What have I ever done to anybody in my life to deserve this? I never did anything in my life to hurt anybody. Literally, a man asked me for my number. I said no, and he he picked up a brick in front of so many men and was like, what are you going to do? And I told all these men, like, yo, why is this man got a brick on my face? And he's, he's holding a brick and all these men is watching and nobody does nothing. And he hits me in my face and they all just watch. And they let that get in the car. How is this okay? This is what y'all doing to women? like don't understand like I'm just trying to take my friend out from five years ago like literally spend my whole money not bothering nobody like what the fuck kind of shit is this I'm in the parking lot just trying to buy some food and like I'm literally like why is this like, bossing up on me like this and I'm looking at all these they literally let this do all of this they let this like really like do all of that I never thought it was gonna happen, yo. Like, it's so wild. And he's gonna get away with it. He got in the car. He got away. He never gonna get caught. He's gonna move on. He's probably at an after party right now having a good time. Do you feel good about yourself doing this to a woman? For what? Like, all this violence against black women is not okay. Like, what do I do to deserve this? Like, how, what is my defense against this? Still, it's been 12 hours. I'm in the hospital. I'm getting discharged. I do have a concussion, so I gotta take it slow for a week. Unfortunately, I don't have the kind of job that's gonna give me that kind of grace. So, you know, I still got a mother. I still gotta teach. I still gotta work. <laughs> I really just want the best for everybody, and I don't know why people want to kill me. I can't even chew. Food the next week. <laughs> I had a vacation that I planned. Six months ago for my birthday. I'm so afraid. Like, I'm so afraid. Like, why do people want to hurt me so bad? I really love my community and just to know that like people hate me to this level, to this kind of level of violence. All right, she doesn't know why people want to kill her, why people want to hurt her, but she publicizes each and everything, and that's a whole nother conversation. Um, she also records everything that happens to her, so it makes it difficult to believe that anything is um, is truly genuine. 
coming from her when she complains about a complaint. Because again, she's said that she's going to sue Dollar Tree. She said she's going to sue the Hilton for a hotel dispute. Um, she's permanently banned from Airbnb. The list is infinite. Like it goes on and on and on and on. And I think that she thinks that sometimes her recording or beginning to record first is a flex. Um, and it's not. <laughs> um, however, however, um, I do think that this is going to catch up with her at some point or another. She seems like the type of person where she understands that she can just like wipe people out in legal fees if you don't want to pay or be bothered with appearing in court with her. They don't want to be bothered with her. They don't want to stand in court with her. So the fact that everybody does whatever they can do to not show up in court with her, she thinks everybody's going to do that. <laughs> And some people are going to show up to, to make a fool out of you. And that's just that. Um, and some of you may not remember. Oh, Jesus. That is resume. All your life, you're going to be your pussy. All your life, you're going to be your pussy. And I fuck for my... Wait a minute. Let's start from the beginning. Trying to be me up to me. You grew up and they mad because you trying to fucking be somebody. They mad because you trying to be somebody. I'm trying to be a doctor and they mad. Look what they did to me. Look what they did to me for no reason. They don't beat me up. I'm 30 years old. They gonna beat me up. Grown ass niggas try to beat me up. Grown ass niggas try to beat me up for no reason. Look at me. I'm not a bad person. Y'all know that. Y'all know I'm a good person. And they try to do this to me. Guess what? It's up and down for a real nigga. But you gonna be your pussy all your life, nigga. All your life, you gonna be your pussy. All your life, you gonna be your pussy. And I fought for myself because I'm a gay ass bitch. What's up? It's up and down for a real nigga. But you gonna be a loser all your life, nigga. Trying to beat up a woman for fucking leaving and doing something with your life. When your ass is fucking a loser all your life, nigga. You can't beat me up. You can't. I'm good. They gave me a real good shine of them. Grown ass niggas. Over fucking six feet tall. Losers. Loser ass niggas. Up and down for a real nigga. But you gonna be a loser all your life, nigga. They try to roll us on your wrist for playing giant. All right, so we are back at it, but actually we're going to go ahead and we are, we're going to go, it's time to go, and um, I just, if there was anything I could leave you with, it's don't feel obligated to give someone advice or assistance or the ability to do something positive in their life if you can't gauge if that person it, person is mentally stable. That's coming from Tyrese. Tyrese was expecting DJ Envy to not only become a mental health expert overnight, but to also surpass the disrespect that he had given his wife. And um, yeah. That's really interesting, and that's all I'll say. And I will leave it at that. Um, I will leave it. Uh, 
Um, I'll leave it at that. So whatever you like, whatever you don't like, whatever you agree with, it's okay. You are more than welcome to be a part of this channel. If you um, agree with me, if you disagree with me, as long as you respectfully disagree, I am totally okay with your presence. If you get disrespectful and you start talking mess, then, you know, that's when you start to wonder, well, why can't I see my comments on your channel? Yes, yeah, I, either I or somebody else blocked you. Um, you know, but it is what it is. And protecting your mental health and protecting your, your, your peace, your mental peace, is something that I feel everybody should be obligated to. Um, for me, it definitely is. And I just hope that you all are protecting yourself in a way that is most conducive to you. I was about to say, I hope that you're protecting yourself the way I protect myself, but the way I protect myself may not be the way that you protect yourself. So I hope that whatever looks like self-care for you is ultimately whatever you end up deciding to do. As long as it don't involve disrespecting me. Um, you know, you can't win for losing ultimately overall. You'll always have some negative comments, no matter how positive, how much of a positive note you end, uh, you know, the live stream off on. There are always going to be people who um, just want to eat you alive and tear you apart, but you can't prioritize them or give them a damn. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. This was a really good live stream. Um, I'm going to get off of here. I hope y'all have a good weekend. I'm excited for the weekend. I'm so happy that it's Friday because I get to sleep in tomorrow, so on and so forth. And I'm really excited about um, being able to sleep in. So... I know some people want me to continue this live, but I have to end it, okay? So um, make sure, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Backup channel, but also there's another channel linked down below in the description box. If you're one of those makeup girlies, you want to make sure you hit that second link down below in the description box. Some of us girlies, we are already makeup pros. Other folks, they're trying to figure out, should I buy this drugstore foundation or powder? Should I buy this high-end one? And sometimes you do need to buy the high-end one. And sometimes you need to buy the drugstore one. Um, but you'll never know unless you're actually watching reviews of people who actually utilize and use these products. So I would recommend you checking out and subscribing to Deeper Than Skin Deep. She does reviews on high-end um, primarily high-end skincare makeup, but sometimes she does talk about drugstore things as well. So it will be the second link down below in the description box for my makeup girlies. Sunday syrup is coming back for me as well for me to do my makeup and talk about what's been happening and going on for the week. But listen, I gotta go. I love you all so much. I'm sending y'all positivity, good vibes, and all that stuff. As always, I hope you have an amazing week. And, and I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. Deuces. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen. Or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. You know what? I have to actually acknowledge my the people who um, contributed um, in a monetary fashion. Um, just got here, but I gotta catch the replay. Shout out to Joy Joy's World for sending a two dollar cash uh, uh, super chat. Should I say? I'm sorry. Um, I already acknowledged Oprah Winfrey's. Mia Lynn sends a dollar forty nine cent super sticker. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. A lady sends five dollars and says, 
if she truly cared about the community, she would file a police report, give a description to the cops, and save the next potential victim. Absolutely. You know what? I agree. And thank you for the $5 super chat and saying that. I think she has a Halloween costume. <gasps> oh, when you on the phone with family that don't know how to hang up yet, say, but y'all, y'all need to behave, okay? Y'all need to be. <laughs> Thank you all so much for supporting the stream. I do appreciate you all sending cash app, super chat to join the membership. Um, let me see if I have any pancakes here. I do have one from Shy Guy. And they said, for utilizing creativity. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. So I got one pancake. We got some... Um, oh, we got some um, people who actually had some things to say in the comments. And, and that was nice. But listen, I love you all so much. Y'all stay beautiful, black, and blessed. Oh, I will catch y'all in the next one this weekend. Hopefully, I can get live this weekend. If y'all motivate me and comment enough down below, I can get live this weekend. Because sometimes when, I, when it's the weekend, I just... I chillax all the way, but I want to start being able to give y'all some content on the weekend. So I love you all so much. Y'all have a great week and let me know your thoughts on this situation, which is literally living la vida loca. <laughs> and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Deuces. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.